32 minutes, 21 seconds. Five second tone followed by a one second pause. You are listening to Space Boy Universe. Okay, gang, let's go. Let's go. Houston, Texas. Welcome to Space Boy Universe, featuring Space Boy and the lovely Serlana. So strap in and prepare for launch sequence. Greetings and salutations. I'm Space Boy, and across from me is the lovely Serlana, and this is Space Boy Universe. It is April 14th, 2014. Excuse me, 2018. Man, I need a time machine. Bad. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about Bonner Von Braun. Don't, don't I bomb me over there. Warner. Hold on. Go ahead and say it. Werner Von Braun. Thank you. V, 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 not w, w, v. Anyway, so now that I've got my brain corrected over there, as always, follow us on Twitter. That's at the SB Universe. Follow Serlana at Serlana. Follow me, Space Boy, at Space Boy Music. Of course, follow the network that brings you all this fine programming, and that's at the SBU Network. Remember to hashtag your tweets tonight with hashtag SB Universe and Space Cadets. Uh, space Cadets. Uh, hang out with those Space Cadets by going to SpaceBoyUniverse.com, click the dancing chat bubble, and that'll get you in with all the cool kids. Right in addition to Twitter, you can find the Universe on Facebook, Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. And let's not forget, we're also on iHeartMedia. Just look for Space Boy Universe. Speaking of YouTube, you can find more than the Space Boy archive of shows. That's right. Um, that is that, that you can find the, the Space Boy music. You can find video interviews, uh, two-bit gamers, and so much more. Can't catch a show live? No problemo. Take SBU on the go with you via Spreaker, SoundCloud, and iTunes, and iHeartMedia. Because, man, we like the broadcast. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes, where I hand it back over to Solana, and uh, we go back and forth. The art community has been given some bad news. And that bad news is that um, Art Bell has passed away. I want to tell you that uh, it's a sad time in our community. But we shouldn't be too sad because the man brought us such wonderful programming over the many years that he was on the air. In fact, being the creator of Coast to Coast AM kind of was the highlight of many people that are in this community now in podcasting and owe a debt of gratitude to the man. You know, I look back in time and I remember the first time I heard Art. And I guess it was a, must have been the mid-90s, maybe a little bit earlier. And I, I guess I was up late because I was suffering from insomnia and I couldn't sleep. And I kind of flipped on my radio, and they were talking about UFOs. And I was like, whoa, this is great. I mean, I want more. I want to hear more on this, you know. And, of course, uh, I guess a week went by where, you know, after that show, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't think about listening to it again. But then it kind of like, you know, I remember the show. I wonder if it's still on. So I searched the dial, and I couldn't find it. And I, was like, I thought, oh, I'll never find the show again. But then again, I, I, as I flipped through the airwaves, there was Art's bell. There was Art Bell's voice again. His his voice was such a unique personality. Uh, it it just screamed out to be a talk show overnight. And from that, we got many different programmings. Uh, that uh, it just thinking back, it just it, it was just a wonderful time for radio. I was introduced to people like Richard Hoagland, uh, Linda Moulton Howe, and of course. 
reintroduced to Whitley Strieber, uh, who later went on to do art show Dreamland, which I guess Whitley ended up getting Dreamland all to himself. I guess kind of like a gift to him. The thing is, you know, art eventually left the airwaves. Um, it was sad when we heard that his wife Ramona passed away. And then we were surprised when he remarried um, and went off to the Philippines. But then he came back on, um, on I guess, uh, radio. Um, I guess I have a mental block because uh, I guess what he was on... Uh, um, XM radio, I guess that's what it was, or it might've been a different one. I'm sure our audience can correct me if I'm wrong. A little sentimental over the idea of just missing him, but you know, he came on, he had some issues. Um, and the, I guess the XM people couldn't handle his issues. And so he retired again, but that loss led him into internet radio with the, the creation of dark matter radio network. And, um, you know, he came back for a little bit and then he left and, and then I have to say, Heather has done a wonderful job filling in for him and, and making that her own there. And, and let's not forget coast to coast, you know, even though Art left, you know, uh, you have George Norrie, he's done a wonderful job keeping coast to coast going, made it his own too. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that we owe a lot to Art Bell with all the stories that he told us overnight, keeping us awake, making us late or hung over in the next day for work. I had many of those. <laughs> and uh, and they were worth every single penny. I remember when, and if you wanted to get an archive of the show, you could send in uh, for a tape. Um, and man, have things changed since then. We've got podcasting, digital on demand. Um, the landscape has changed such dramatically since art was on the on the air you know uh, i remember such shows of of arts parts uh, mel's hole uh, one that always intrigued me was bugs and the bigfoots that uh, supposedly that bugs had killed and, and gave art a map to the uh, location of where they were buried of course many other shows that he would bring on you know what was really cool listening to art was that he could take any kind of subject matter and listen to to it and and just kind of let people go with it and and he was just a genuine person when he was on the air and another cool thing is when he would take calls it was not like he had a screener i mean he would take the punches as soon as they came in so if they were crazy they would boot you off the air i mean art would in fact i was one of those people he booted off the air once when i called on um, a sh particular show. I'm not going to tell you which one it was because I don't want egg on my face, but I deserved it from art. And it was quite, uh, just the idea of talking to him was just really cool. He will be missed. I mean, I can't say enough to tell you how much I appreciate what he's given this community and what he's given me as far as uh, inspiration. So... Here's to you, Art.
I want to share a poem real quick before we bring Solana on that uh, Jean Pateau wrote. He is so po poetic, and um, I think this one's a good one in, in, in honor of art. He built a kingdom in the land of Nye, high desert wisdom, a discerning eye, a search that quit, uh, quick, quickened, broadcasting the truth. As we saw it, he held the key. His heart has passed. But his soul will always be part of us. By Jean Vito. Jean, you are a wizard when it comes to poetry. And I just wanted to say thank you for putting that out there for everyone. So on that note, uh, I bring in my lovely co-host, Serlana. And I know how you're doing over there, Serlana. Yeah, what's, uh, what's up? Um, you know, the usual, I, you know, as... Uh, you know, uh, we did a kind of little tribute to Art Bell. Mm -hmm. He passed away, and um, a lot of uh, people uh, have been impacted by this, uh, who it touched a lot of people's lives. I know that we had a short conversation today that, uh, you know, you didn't get a chance to say uh, or hear him much when he was on, the, uh, but uh, in little ways, you've heard him here and there. and Archival stuff. Uh, um, yeah. I appreciate who he was and what he meant to um the ufo paranormal community um like i said i i've only listened to coast to coast a handful of times in my entire life i don't i'm not an active listener right now um and in all defense but i appreciate what he like this is like when bowie passed away i'm like mm -hmm. appreciate what he meant like some of his music but i'm not you know well, one of those i'm not one of those it's the conversation that we've people, had before you know, that, when you know diving into subject matters you really didn't dive into a lot mm -hmm. of this stuff until we started doing this show together and uh, you've learned a lot and but i mean you like i said you've heard clips from youtube and i, I fully and, appreciate yeah. what he means to people mm -hmm. um so i respectfully uh give my condolences to his remaining family and all his listeners and fans so. mm -hmm. Very good. Well, Sir Lana, um, we've made it to another Saturday. Now, I guess I'm getting old <laughs> now because uh, I said Vonner, Vonner. Well, here's the I thing thought, about German. You know, well, here, I, I know the Wien, the, like the, Wiener Schnitzel and... Uh, the V's uh, and, are W's and the W's are V's. Wiener, uh, it's you know, flip-flops. Yeah, so... Werner but, von Braun. But I, I was practicing the, the thing before the show. You know I always do that to try to loosen up before. Yeah, so you and, don't sound like a frustrated old grandpa. Uh, yes, exactly. So, like you do all the time. Uh, I, whatever. <laughs> and um, so I said Vonner von Braun. But I said it differently, and you caught me, and what did I s I don't know. Just don't try to say it wrong anymore. Let's try to say it correctly. Am I saying it wrong, Vonner? Werner. Werner. Werner oh, von oh, Braun. Okay. See, I'm not putting the German spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could only see behind no, the No, you don't want to see. Yeah, yeah, so we don't want to get busted over here. So anyway, <laughs> don't um, look. I'll do my. I'll just uh, do my best and leave that to you. Right. Well, before we get into it. Yeah. So we got other things to talk about. Before so, we get really into it, um, I've updated our website. Yay! At Tell the us top, more. <laughs> at the top, very top, upper right hand corner mm -hmm. on every page, there is the new call in number. The new toll free call in number. And if you should happen. To have us still in your Skype or your phone or your cell phone under the 713, if you try to call that, you will automatically be forwarded to the toll-free number. Now, keep this in mind. If you call the 713, uh, it's still going to, if you're doing long distance or somewhere, if you get charged, uh, you're going to get charged. Yeah. Uh, but the other number is an but 800 number. You'll it's still free, get connected toll, to us toll somehow. Free, it's a toll-free number to call the other number. So, you know, we finally hopefully got this skype crap fixed and by just not using it for you to call us yeah so no. from this day forward um we are using that 800 number which will give you the audience one the guest we have will have a good connection they'll have a separate number yeah, they'll have a separate number they can call and then you the audience will have an 800 number that's toll free to call and then you know that should make life a little bit more bear, uh, bearable. And so hopefully we've got our phone thing figured out for now. Mm -hmm. 
So and uh, we'll give that out later if you want, unless you want it now. I mean, you can also go to the website and you mm-hmm. can see it. Um, yeah, well, you can take our number now, and uh, I know later we're not going to answer until <laughs> yeah later on. You may want to call in about mm-hmm. the show, or you may want to call in and talk about Art Bell or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. or or whatever's on your mind. It's been a while since we've heard from our listeners mm-hmm. since we've been. taken calls, so you might want to just drop in and say, "Hey, hey, um, hey, hey, hey." If I should disappear oh. during this broadcast, don't don't freak out. It, the only person who's going to freak <laughs> out is me over here because yeah. Well, you have access to my notes, but um, it's it's that that number again. You can find on our website spaceballuniverse.com, right there at the top on your right. You can't miss it. It's on every single page, and if you you don't see it, I'm going to have to wonder if if you you know you need help. <laughs> Well, I think most of our space cadets do need hope. Anyway. Uh, so. So. All right. So where do we go from here? So I think that, uh, yeah, music is still free on spaceboymusic.com. Oh, well, then let me tell that because that's a me thing. So, yes, Spaceboy Music is free. So speaking and, of which. Yes. <laughs> give me a second. Yes. I'm, I'm getting to that point. Okay. So Wednesday, if you heard on one of the uh, shows called uh, Lighting the Void, I was on there. I announced that uh, my new album is out. Yes, it's finally out there. Holy smokes, is it out there? It is, I guess it's 17 tracks of music. Mm-hmm. I, I I guess it is. But anyway, what you know what's the ultimate thing about that, Serlana, is what's cool about it is it's free. Free. Download the whole stinky album and you get it for free. It's not really that stinky. It's actually pretty good. Music that your grandma could bug um, out with. Joe liked it. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, Joe was like, uh, just bragging left and right on his program, and uh, you know, it. My ego was feeling pretty good that night, so yeah, you know. I heard the whole thing. So, but um, it's free. Uh, Seventeen tracks. It's called the end of the beginning, um, and uh, it's there. So go get you some. Remember, here, here's the thing about my music nowadays: is it's free for you, not to use for commercial use. So you can you, you can download it, you can share it. Um, but most of all, play it loud. Now, and like I said, if you want to use it for commercial use, like for a project or something, get in touch with me. We'll work out a mutual deal. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, it's not about making the money now. It's more about putting the street cred out there that, hey, I can make some great music. And you should have some great music in your library. So download it. Don't wait. Just do it. Do it. So anyway, that's my uh, SBU music Um promotion and i'm very proud of you and i'm very pleased for you so i wanted you to get that out there really wait what have you done with my wife <laughs> look this is a show we have to talk in the microphones and if that you was just for you if you can't say stuff over the air then you shouldn't be you know mouthing anything well, well, well hang on let me text it to you oh hey k 28 oh hi mark um we went and ate at a restaurant that was next to a railroad track and parts of the restaurant were made up of actual railroad cars and it was railroad themed all inside Mm -hmm. and we thought of you k28 yeah and he even served tiramisu we didn't get any but we saw other people getting it but unfortunately k they sell barbecue so there's no such thing as vegan because you know (laughs) this is texas and that's just silly but anyway, it was good eatings, and but at least we thought about you from the railroad angle. So you yeah, know. we thought about you as we were eating good stuff, and you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good to see you, K twenty eight, and uh, all the other space cadets that are in there: Gene Vito, Beverly, Dennis, the Multimedia King, uh, Yeg. It's always a good uh, to see our Canadian um, hugs and kisses uh, space cadets. You know, it's hugs and it's hugs, kisses, and rockets. Rocket or is it? Yeah. You don't even know. <laughs> I'll have to think about it later. But anyway, what else you got on that plate over there as we approach um, uh, the 930? Well, just, you want to get into it or? What, the story? We still got about 10 minutes. You mean, oh, oh, we're still on the pregame. Oh, we, still... This is still pregame. This I is came back earlier and I thought, um, sure. Uh, la, 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 la. We, yeah, we went there. That was good. That was, that's some good food. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. Um, I hear that. We are going to try to get back into space. Yeah. Because doing concerning the theme of tonight. So NASA may fly humans on a less powerful version of its deep space rocket. Are we talking about the, which 
Which Space Ryan? Launch System. Um, is it the Orion that they've been dealing with? Uh, well, it says there's uh, recent funding to boost Congress to build new launch platform. When humans fly on the rocket, in the fir- for the first time, it'll be in uh, the twenty year 2020. Mm-hmm. Speaking of 2020, you posted something on the Facebook wall about the, the Ford Bronco release. And, man, it That was is, my wall. It is a sexy beast, let me yeah, tell you. Yeah, I told you, Bronco is coming back. Mm-hmm. And it was the one they're showing, it's red. It's going to show up in Fort 2020. Just in time for OJ's release. Well, yeah, well, just in time for the apocalypse, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how it's got the, uh, what, the LCD uh, lights on the top of the Bronco. LED, and, probably. Or LED, LCD lights that blind you, you know. Uh, but these tires. But that's are, what the Bronco was for. Was for what? Is it like all terrain and yeah, seeing it's stuff? Kind of an and all terrain kind of situation. Hunting and fishing and yeah. being rugged and manly yeah, and escaping down the LA freeway. You yeah, know? I think it's it's a good for um, get the heck out of a situation vehicle. Right. Don't and, you think? Yeah, I, and uh, you know, I like it's like a bit. Jeep. The one you have posted is red. It it is is a delightful. Looking That's on my Facebook wall. Yeah. Yes, I know. We we've established. Did you share that. it out? So no, other I haven't. People can... I haven't shared it out. I mean, I well, here I'm going to share it now, just for you. There we go. We shared that. But anyway, you get a chance to take a look at that that, that sexy beast, and uh, you'll probably fall in love with it, with its big tires and shiny fire engine red paint job. And but anyway, go check that out if you get a chance. Uh, let's see what else we got brewing here. Um, um, what else happened this week? Uh, you know, we continue to get ready for Comic Palooza. Yeah. That seems to be a big theme in our life right now. and uh, All my uh, weekends are screwed until it's over. Uh, we got uh, Today we picked up some more t-shirts and uh, some stencils for letters for our, making our own t-shirts. Making our own t-shirts specifically for Comic Palooza. Um, you know, we might have a few leftovers. If we do, we'll you know, give them to some select uh, space cadets that aren't able to make it. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's just going to be a kicking good time here. And, of course, uh, you know, you're going to benefit by listening to it on Space Boy Universe. So, you know, that's going to be pretty group. Are you, are you okay over there? You, you look like your your eyebrow is turning into one. Don't don't even look at me. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? There's no need to look at me. Look, uh, what else you got over there? Um, I just saw something interesting. There's going to be a new high-definition vinyl. Okay, what's that all about? Um, LP that promises longer playing time and louder, clearer audio. Is this something that's even needed? Because I thought people went to vinyl for very specific reasons, and it was for the re- you know oh, retro. I, I see. So they're trying to make vinyl a step up, but still be vinyl. It. They've already got the patent filed. It was filed two years ago. It is the audio. It's first digitally converted to a three D topographic map, then in lasers engraved the map onto a stamper which makes the impression into the vinyl like you're used to knowing. Uh, it's not too dissimilar from how traditional vinyl is made, but the needle etches grooves into rotating lacquer. It's used to create a mother copy, and then it's used to form the stamp. So this company, Rebe Innovation, is betting that using these more precise methods, mm-hmm. they'll carry out the same task but be better quality with less loss of audio information. But I thought the whole point of people like <laughs> all over their LPs was like to hear the hiss and the pop and the scratch, you I mean, know. Those are kind of... If they take that away, then might as well just listen to it on as an MP3, you know. True, What's, true. I don't get it unless you're just like, you get off on like playing with records or something, but anyway. But can it do this? But can it do this? So anyway, um, you know, good stuff. Uh, you know, I could see, you know, you know, they probably, you know, technology's come along to make something that's like from the past like that better. Uh, but I do see the romantic aspect of having the, the scratches and the pops yeah. and the oi flavin, you know. And yeah. uh, so, you know, that would be kind of missed if uh, that part is gone and, and you don't hear that uh, out of your own hi-fi fidelity. So I guess. Well, I'm, I guess those, I suppose LPs will be around forever till we die but you know certain things will seem to come and go like a tracks and cassette tapes they seem to have these little in and out revivals but i don't think anybody misses cds um 
Well, they're just all handy. But, uh, you know, I will say that the... You make some good craft project with broken CDs. The thing is that, uh, you know, I had so many 45s growing up. And, you know, it just they're just so cool to listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, my first uh, 45 that I ever owned was the Bee Gees. If you leave me now, I know. Back in the 70s, it's kind of showing in my Mine age. were hand-me-downs, so I don't know which one was the first. But they were all Bee Gees and Andy Gibb mm -hmm. and ABBA. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're hand-me-downs. So Even the record player was a hand-me-down. I always looked forward to when my parents would go to the record store. And, you know, I got the chance to, to pull records, you know, 45s out. And so that was always fun to bond with my parents. I remember my first cassette tape. Oh, yeah. That was purchased for me. Mine? Well, that's a good question. It I was want... Olivia Newton-John's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. Hmm. So... You know, speaking of uh, of music, we need to cue the music for our break, Solana, which I'm sure you're excited over there. And yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get more jazzed up here as we talk about the the father of space technology. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. <laughs> Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. This is author Gordon Root. You are listening to the Space Boy Universe. This is K-28, and I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hi, y'all. This is Lori calling from Texas, and I love listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to Space Boy Universe. This is Wendy. I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, y'all. This is Lorelai Jalil. I listen to Space Boy Universe. Don't you? Tell your mom and them I said hi.
You know, tonight's an interesting subject matter because, you know, we still got music playing. Here are your host, Space Boy and Sir Ryan. Sorry, Savannah. I'm sure you still love me, Computer Voice. Anyway, like I said, tonight is an interesting subject matter beyond our normal lives. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, I was kind of excited that this was going to be a history topic. I know there was a few space cadets that were jazzed who that we were going to talk about history tonight. And when you picked the subject matter, you know, the first thing that popped in my mind, Serlana, was, was he a Nazi or a, or was he just a scientist? And, and I'm sure as we discussed tonight, because, you know, that is the pink elephant in the room when it comes to him. Uh, it, it's hard to dismiss the fact that he contributed so much to the United States um, space program. But we cannot forget that uh, him and a lot of other scientists came over here via Project Paperclip. And I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So if you want to go ahead and take it from there and, and let's get this party started, uh, let's learn some more about the, the man who brought us into the space age. Well, <clears throat> I did pick this because as doing the course of doing the show over the years, he keeps coming up, his name, you know, mm -hmm. historically. Mm-hmm. And I don't recall, there's a lot of stuff I feel like I got left out in middle school and high school and college when they teach you history, that especially is, world history. That is true. And we talk about that a lot. In fact, that's like, why did we- Did they do it on purpose? Why is Space it just, Boy Universe was, you know, one of the main topics of Space Boy Universe was history. And, and I agree with you in the sense that going to school, there was a lot of uh, history that wasn't talked about or- was whitewashed where I don't know if it was just because of time constraints or I just fl flat out don't remember but I've learned things that I know they never touched on so he keeps coming up now mm -hmm. here's what I lit the little bit I did know I knew he was a German rocket scientist I knew he worked under the Nazi regime at one point during World War II I know he came over with Operation Paperclip mm -hmm. Uh, I know he was the creator of the V-2 rocket and the Saturn rockets, and I know he was referred to as the father of modern space flight in this country. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I wanted to find out as I started doing research. Some things kept coming up. Where did his loyalties lie? Was it in Germany? Was it with that regime? Was he just doing what he could to get by and stay out of trouble? Or did he change his tune when he came over here? Or was he already on board with our way of living? So did he work willingly with us? Or did he, like I said, did he just do that to keep him going to prison? And how significant were his contributions? What did he actually do? I, that's like, all I know is those two rockets. So. so as you'll see through the course of this discussion, we'll be asking, what about his morals? Where does his loyalties lie? Was he a full-on Nazi party member? Was he doing what he had to do? Was he all scientist and cold Vulcan-like and different because scientists don't have feelings about things? So this is what stood out to me time and again in my research. So I appreciate, I hope you appreciate, I was pressed for time. There's, this is a, he's, this is a big topic again. Mm -hmm. So I think I could go more in depth looking for examples of Oh, he was like this. Oh, well, he's like this. Well, this just sources like you know, you know, back and forth. I think you could paint him however you wanted. Well, as you go on and get into the subject matter, I am looking forward to talking about that very subject of uh, him being a Nazi. And so let's let's go ahead and get started well, because I'm I'm like over here. The, like, I'll show you these to... different sources that tell the different sides. Mm -hmm. All right. So, <clears throat> who was he? Let's just start out with the basics. So we're looking back through the lens of history. Oh, I don't know why I hit this microphone. <laughs> He's something of an iconic figure now. Mm -hmm. He is now seen as the father of the American space program. Though he was born in Germany, he was a German, and he did work for the Nazis during that regime. We brought him over here during Paperclip. Uh, well, let's do a breakdown of his early history. And if I miss something, Space Boy, please feel free to fill in the gap, and I'll tell you when I'm finished. So one of the things I'm going to refer to a lot during this topic is the go-to source, they say, for all things Von Braun 
which is the biography called Von Braun, Dreamer of Space, Engineer of War by Michael J. Neufeld. Mm -hmm. So I sadly don't have time to read large works of like this biography, this book, um, during the week because we do another job. And I'm also married to a really high maintenance guy, so that takes up a lot of my time. So anyway, Von Braun was born in what is now Poland in a place called Wersitz. And when he was little, he got a telescope as a young boy. He soon developed a passion for astronomy. Now, going through school, he was brilliant as a student, but he wasn't consistent. Oddly enough, he did not do well in physics and math. And that reminds me of that story about Einstein, which I don't know if it's true. Like mm -hmm. Einstein wasn't good at math, but I don't know if that's true or not. So I think that irked Von Braun. So he managed to turn it around somehow when he got a copy of The Rocket into Interplanetary Space by Hermann Oberth. Mm -hmm. You may have heard of Oberth. Mm -hmm. Von Braun came from a noble and politically influential family. Uh, he was into rockets from an early age, and he's, he was the youngest member of an amateur rocket enthusiast back when he was little. So he grew up during the Weimar Republic days of Germany. Uh, the Weimar Republic days are the years from 1919 to 1933. So this is before, I guess, the rise of Hitler. And it describes the German state during and, those years. And you said 1919? 1919 to 1933. So, so we're dealing with uh, uh, with how f it wasn't too long after World War One because 1914 mm -hmm. was World yeah. War One. Yeah, it's between the two wars, I guess. Right. So uh, a national assembly was convened in Weimar, where a new constitution for the Deutsches Reich was written and adopted on August 11th, 1919. So things changed in Germany as they were going to change radically. Mm -hmm. He also had an interest so in rockets. So when he von Braun got the opportunity to build them, but it wasn't for his scientific curiosity to explore space, but to annihilate the enemies of Germany. Did you want to add anything or no, uh, so far, I mean, you're doing great. Um, you know, so what did he do? 1937, the German army, and Air Force opened a place called, I'm just going to assume I'm saying this correctly, Pinamunde. Pinamunde. Things took a turn in the winter of 1941 42 for Germany. So Joseph Goebbels said, We need to build a wonder weapon. This would be Werner von Braun's first big achievement slash triumph, if you want to call it that, the A 4 rocket, which they renamed it to the V 2, which stands for, and I didn't know this, Vengeance Weapon 2. So that's something I don't recall being told. But then I don't know that I, I ever went this in depth into specifics into World War II. You know, gosh, World War II is such a huge, broad topic. You could just pick a theater of war, a place and a time, and you could just just, just go straight down a rabbit hole. I know through our course of history that um, Britain was terrified of these V-2 rockets. With good, with mm -hmm. good um, uh, because they were a target mm -hmm. of it as well as Antwerp and Liège, Germany. I mean, France. Liège, France. I had to go listen how that was spoken. When you look back at the historical films of the devastation that happened in Britain, um, you know, they were pretty pretty powerful. And, you know, you had a lot of the population trying to seek, um, um, you know, coverage in, mm -hmm. the, in the London Underground. A lot um, of... Or, uh, or from away from these things. A lot of, uh, you know, movies and books written about that time in mm -hmm. fact i think doctor who even explored that mm -hmm. you know but yeah i don't think there were any dialects uh, back then at that point in that's time. the last thing you have some incompetent <laughs> german nazi daleks exterminate anyway go on please so when i was looking into this part of his life mm -hmm. so they were at penamunde doing these uh miss building these rockets mm -hmm. so i guess they wanted a little bit more secure location to, to manufacture stuff. So they went underground, literally underground. And the V2s were manufactured in a, at a forced labor camp factory in Mittelwerk. Um, this is from NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center history website. Um, and that, this website quotes, listen to this. Scholars are still reassessing Von Braun's role in these controversial activities. So let's take a moment to talk about the V2 real quick. Mm -hmm. 
It was nicknamed Vengeance Weapon or Vengeance Weapon 2. It stood for, let's see, Virgil Tungsvaf 2, a Retribution Weapon 2. It gives you an idea of the headspace of where Germans were thinking about their enemies. It was the very first long range ballistic missile, guided ballistic missile, that is, powered by a liquid propellant rocket engine made to fire at allied, allied cities during World War II. And as, as I said, it was launched at London. Antwerp and Liège, France, which killed this rocket killed about nine thousand civilians. So it just shows you how devastating these things were, and um, you know, and those were small rockets at the time, uh, considering what we have now today. They can practically go to the other side of the planet and and annihilate people. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, this whole operation was underground, and it was forced labor so it's like a concentration camp underground inhumane conditions of course uh people who worked there were dying in the hundreds and they, they said there is no way von braun did not see any of that happening now another source says in attempting to justify his involvement in the development of the v2 braun, von braun stated that patriotic motives had outweighed whatever qualms he had had about the moral implications of his nation's policies under Hitler. He also emphasized the innate impartiality of scientific research, which in itself, he said, has no moral dimensions until its products are put to use by larger society. If that ain't a cop-out statement, I swear, that's right, right, that right there turned me off this guy, right there. You are never going to be in your a situation in your life where you don't have to pick a side. You here, can't ride the fence your entire life. You I don't know, give me that scientific bullcrap. We've had this conversation about this before, and I, I really I want to save the more juicy stuff between you and I till after. I was just say during the break. <laughs> no, I mean, um, you know. It's like okay. Well, you, will you will you know when to bring it back? Yeah, okay. because you know it's. Uh, I know I'll forget. It's 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 needs to be discussed because you know you you're very passionate when it comes to like well I can't believe that somebody just could be this way and 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 not be knowledgeable I, I just, of the situation and I know. just don't buy this. I just built it. I don't care what you do with it. It's not my fault you go and kill each other with the most powerful weapon that's designed for killing people. I, I don't. I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. <laughs> do you? Really? Yeah, but I won't, I won't get into it. So <laughs> now, again, Von Braun's possible involvement with the Nazi party and the atrocities that occurred in Germany is still being debated by scholars. After Von Braun surrendered to us, he issued several statements that his role in the National Socialist Party was undertaken only because to refuse would have ended his career. Um, that's probably true, but I also don't think they would have harmed him because he was just too valuable of an asset. The things he knew and could do were just too valuable. So, um, oh, shout out to Fran. <laughs> I guess she got out of Fight Club. Yeah. So anyway, here's a curious thing. Yet, in 1944, Von Braun was arrested on suspicion of treason, treason by the Gestapo. What did they accuse him of? Get this, get this. Being more concerned on reaching the stars rather than developing the weapon. They're like, get your head out of the clouds and focus, focus, focus. So they're just going to accuse him of treason to get, you know, I guess to get him seriously focused back. So what you're saying right now is that he was more interested in shooting for the stars instead of shooting at stars. Mm-hmm. So I just want to bring that up for right now. Now, the biographer Neufeld says he makes it clear that this episode had more to do with the politics of the Nazi regime during that the last years of the war and with the SS, SS's attempt to seize control over the rocket project rather than what Werner Braun, Braun did or did not do. It wasn't really about von Braun. It was about a power grab. 
So they maybe they were just trying to intimidate him to focus on his purpose. Um, like I said, I think he was too important and useful for them to just like, you know, dispose of him. So Von Braun used that, his possible, ar his arrest. He said, hey, look, they tried to arrest me on treason for not being on board with their ways. So he said, I'm the victim here. He wasn't a follower or an accomplice. His advocates today still agree with Von Braun's stance he, that he was the victim. Mm -hmm. So you see how this is going back and forth, back and forth, how he's being painted. Yeah, I see. You, you just, you, I'm going to tell you what you tell me. You can't just shake your head. It's radio. Um, I think that uh, you you know what I'm thinking, but uh, please continue. Are you thinking this? I mean, I hope not. Holy smokes, woman. That's what I think you're thinking. <laughs> I'm not thinking okay, that. Okay, good. I hope not. However, um, Von Braun's legacy is also weighted with his involvement in the war activities, such as his status as a, let me get this German word down, Strumbuffer, Strumbuffer of the SS and former member of the Nazi party. Now, I did not verify that. So I don't know what that means or if it's true. So now a former colleague of his says that Von Braun and members of Von Braun's team were always focused on the work and not the past. This is once he got to America. They said they didn't talk about that stuff over in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. So this was American aerospace engineer David Christensen who worked with Von Braun when he got over here. So again, his biographer says that the Germans had no record of Von Braun protesting the way those workers had been treated and uh but you know can you trust those guys to say stuff that are, that's true mm -hmm. so he newfeld also thinks von braun was too indifferent or too circumspect to say anything about how these people were being treated that were forced to build his stuff and they were dying in large numbers i reckon because they just weren't being taken care of or given you know any thought to them being human so here's that's the information i really want to find out where did his loyalties lie and two you're like well why is it important in you know today well because it irritates me that's why we're talking about it <laughs> but i also have to wonder you know how we talked to brad olson mm -hmm. and he some of his esoteric research involves the fourth reich in america well, did it come over with these scientists somehow? Did they trickle their ways in, or did it come in through some other means? And then you could point out uh, Richard Hoagland's book, uh, um, uh, Dark uh, Matter. Or was it Dark Matter? Uh, dark something. Dark. Oh, dark 30? I cannot I believe I just forgot. Anyway, it dives into the, uh, the, the Nazi and the occultism and uh, uh, of the space program and... Um, I think it is dark matter. Um, but, um, yeah. So another book, just pointing that out, how I, that, I didn't know that, I that need, that's what that was about. Yeah. I need to get you that book. And yeah, so that'd you, be cool. Yeah. So I'll read it. Yeah. So as I was doing this, this different research, um, I was trying to find this out. So I would get these differing reports, you know, I was trying to get like some basic info at the time, like, okay, where'd he grow up? Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I go to biography.com and history.com and the Marshall Space Center, and all three of them have kind of whitewashed out or some of them just left out the war entirely, but they will all admit he was German, all three of them. Mm -hmm. So you can think of this guy as a saint or a devil, depending on which side of the war you were on, I guess, but he's, he's either a hero of space travel or a war criminal or both. So his colleague Christensen said, over here, when he got over here, among all the co-workers, there, were, there was no animosity, though maybe there was some with the people in the town that they worked in. This could have been in El Paso or, or it could have been over in Huntsville, Alabama. So in working with him daily, you get, get very well acquainted. Everybody worked as a team, whether they were German or American. Von Braun was a very broad-based individual, very culturally capable. He played several musical instruments, wrote music. He was an astronomer and certainly 
a top-notch engineer. Quick correction. Sure. It is Dark Mission, The Secret History Dark of Mission. NASA is the name of the book by yes. Richard Hoagland. That's a real famous one of his, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And I can't I believe we don't have definitely, it. Definitely, I have it. I just need to find where I put it, but it would be a good read. Well, there's no point in doing that. You're just going to get to get me the Kindle version. Well, okay, I'll, I'll work on that for you. Right. Okay. So... In, in, in that bi in this biography I keep referring to that said that you know this is the go-to von Braun by Neufeld they said a thread that runs through the portion of the book a huge portion of the book is von Braun's time in the United States is that that connection to that concentration camp slave labor keeps surfacing repeatedly but it for some reason it never drew this widespread attention or heavy criticism during his lifetime like I guess maybe we're looking at it now after his death however the connection finally became well known and tarnished his legacy for the 20th century so they're saying maybe his Cold War past was sanitized by omission because it conflicted with his NASA public image so was that what had to be sanitized his complete complete knowledge of how people were being treated to build his stuff and he's like well look I'm just telling him how to do it I'm not I'm not the one subjecting him to all this and I don't know try to if you try to put yourself in his time in his place right mm -hmm. well real quick before you say any further are you judging today's time against that time well I so said if you I'm trying to you know if you're there you're you're already you're born there you're a citizen and the world changes around you, right? Mm -hmm. And up comes this dictator, and I guess he could have threatened you, your family. Which and what they, what choice do you have? They did to many families. So, and then all this terrible stuff. You're saying, you know, you have to build this hamburger, but we're going to give you all these people to actually do it. But you're going to give them the formula, and you're going to you're going to come up with new stuff every day. But these people are going to actually do it, and they go and they just torture these people to get them to work. But if you don't do your job, then you know. So what you're saying? I'm trying to. I'm trying to see it from that perspective. So it's difficult. You're, what you're saying is that uh, he would come up with these ideas and pass it off, and then these other people would implement it and use the, I guess, slave labor, if you will. Yeah. Um, it's concentration uh, camp. Concentration camp. Underground. And but uh, you're you're saying that should he have been more. Um, I like, guess. hey, what's going on here? Why do you have to do this? More questioning and kind of like uh, you, you, I know you haven't seen the movie Schindler's List, which you should. I do want to see that, but and I know I've got to devote. I've got to make out a block of time. So you're saying is because he didn't go out of his way to try to protect these maybe Jews uh, at the time, whoever they were, you know, whoever um, that uh, didn't go try to protect them, that he is wrong in every sense of the word because he just focused on making it's, rockets. It's a gray area, isn't it? It's not black or white. Hmm. I don't know. Well, on that magical note, Solana, let's take our next break, and that'll lead us to the top of the hour. So you're listening to Space Boy Universe. I'm Space Boy, and she's the lovely Solana, and you know us by now because we've been exploring the universe. Yes, yeah, Space Cadets, us, you, the universe. So don't go anywhere. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. Hey, Sir Lana! What? If Space Boy Universe was cheese, would you eat it? Uh... Come on now, it's a simple question! Maybe? SpaceBoyUniverse.com <laughs>
you are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lana. Ding! What is that supposed to mean, Solana? I was asking you, what's wrong with that thing that uh, you're touching? Uh, that's uh, what gives, uh, you know, what makes space travel so pos- possible. Okay. All right. Well, it keeps dropping one ear of the... I know. It's, it's tech, you know, it's amazing the duct tape and, tape and the bailing wire I used to run the studio here at times. But, you know, uh, you know, not like the technology that you had back in the space age. Well, we're already streets ahead of nice. what they had. Nice so, choice of words. Anyway, so we're we're back with talking about Werner von Braun and you know what he did in Germany before he got here. Well, a little bit more on to expand on you know what he did over there. So they by 1942 he had already joined the Nazi Party, but at, according to von Braun, he said, "Well, I didn't have a choice. I, I had to do that in order to keep going." And it's another side, uh, re- excuse me, <clears throat> source I looked at said it was, it's well documented that Von Braun did not wish for his rocket technology to be used to deliver munitions to cause harm to other people. Again, that's in Neufeld's biography. I'm like, well, maybe he, he just had to do what you got to do, you know. So this is what happened. They suspected that von Braun was a communist sympathizer and he planned to escape to England. So here's what, surely I understand what communism is. That's uh, Soviet Union, right? Is it just that they didn't like anybody but their own dictatorship? They didn't want you to be a, what, a capitalist or a socialist or, you know, a communist sympathizer. Why would you sympathize with communism if you didn't like Nazism? I mean, they're just like bad, 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 aren't they? I don't get what their problem with communism is, but it's just as horrible as what they have. So I guess they thought he was going to escape, von Braun was going to escape to England. So Heinrich Himmler, no less, chief of the German police, of course, one of Hitler's right hand men, had von Braun arrested, according to von Braun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Werner spent two weeks in prison. Before they released him to go straight back to work on the V2. So, in course 1944, hundreds of his rockets, hundreds, were launched at London, England. He said the rocket worked perfectly except for landing on the wrong planet. Because he wanted to go to the moon. He didn't want to blow up the moon, but he wanted to go to the moon. No, clearly he he had a fa- fascination with going to space. Um, peacefully. Peacefully. Now, I guess... This would be a good time to kind of interject here and uh, do. While the, we're still in Germany with him, um, the thing is that um, you know here you're dealing with a man. True, he created a a piece of technology that could destroy civilizations. Um, ultimately, at well, yeah, some yeah, point, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, at the time, more or less destroyed cities. Um, with one bomb remo- where he could launch it and then boof and then destroy. Um, he had people working under him that ultimately built his rockets that were used as slave labor. And, you know, which goes back, I know you keep emphasizing the moral impl- implications of the whole mess. Now, uh, it reminds me of a Star Trek Voyager episode where Alana got one of these stains attached to her her back. Oh yeah! And they had to use a, a Kardashian, you know, holographic. Kardashian. Card. Did I say the Kardashians? Yeah, the Kardashian. Well, might as well be the same. Am thing. I? I'm telling you, it's just as bad. I'm like, oh well, if Kylie Jenner had to work on you as a hologram. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so yeah, so there's this evil doctor that uh, worked for the Kardashians, like a Mingala. Uh, like a Mingala. Like a Mingala. Uh huh. And um, so it kind of. You know, do you use that technology, even though it, yeah. it, it works? She was dying, and mm-hmm. the best thing they had in their database to save her was this knowledge from this evil doctor that lived once a time. So they put together the database and built a hologram of this doctor to try to save Bellana. Mm-hmm. But she, he was, like, universally hated. It's like, mm-hmm. that would be having, like, Mingala work mm-hmm. on you, I suppose. So I guess the point... He's the only one that could save your the, life. The point I'm trying to make here is that, um, um, you know... He uh, was in a position 
where he, he well, let me get my notes here together because, okay. um, you know, uh, in, you know, in 1939, he was demanded to join the National Socialist yeah. Party. Like he said, he didn't have a choice. Yeah, he didn't have a choice. Uh, he was already at the technical director mm -hmm. of the Army Rocket Center. Yes. And, you know, and I, and I guess you've kind of uh, touched base a little bit here and there. Um, so it was not like he had a, a choice. Maybe they... He was forced into doing it. Maybe it was they threatened like, his family or something? It, well, or? You, you know... I don't think it necessarily is threatening his family, but it's not uncommon for people to say, see, or say that, uh, you know, other families were um, threatened or, you know, during that time because, one, it was war, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that the war gives him a way out of the situation. What I'm saying is that, uh, you know, because of the circumstances, you know, he was in, he really had no choice but to join the the, the Nazi party so because he, he says so he says but you know think about this that if he didn't join then he would have kicked been kicked out of the one thing he loved to do was build rockets and ultimately what he wanted to do was to go to space and so quite a dilemma strange, it, and it's a strange journey how he gets there so and so, and, and so you got to ask yourself um you know if is there something that you're passionate about Solana no there isn't <sighs> No, really. If there was, I think I would be a lot better. And, and I think mentally. I asked. I think I asked you. I said, if your passion was to read books, which I know that it is, um, and 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 you were told that in order to keep reading books like you do, then you have to join the uh, the Nazi Party. I would give them up, and then I'd find I'd probably go to videos. No, no, no! You can't do any of that research. You can't do anything that you're I'd give remo them up. remotely. I find it hard to believe that I'll you. I'll count the tiles on the wall. I just can't believe you would do that. I can. I, can. I mean, I, I feel it. like you're you're just saying that so that you can say you can put the guilt or the blame. Because they're right going to make his, me his read door. what they want me to read, and I don't want to read that crap. Well, no. See, he got a chance to do rockets. Mm-hmm. So it's either do rockets as as uh, the, the Nazis want me to read as many fluff pieces. I'm I'm using that as just an example because you know I know what your example is fluff. You know I can't uh, say you know cat breeder or you know or um, you know what else you know waffle ex Belgian waffle uh, uh, investigator. You know I I don't know <laughs> you you. I hate to admit it, but I'm an awful investigator. you know, coming this this season to Fox, oh, God, a new you... show starring Serlana and Space Boy, and where she's a Belgian waffle investigator. I know I'm going to have to make up a fake a fake detective name. For myself. So I, I, German... I see that this conversation is futile when dealing with trying to make Wait, the comparison. Wait, I got to find a, a, a an interpreter. So, you know, I guess he he's he's still doing okay. I, I he still created a method of death and killed many people with his V2 rocket. That's one thing you have to keep in mind. And am I going to get too ahead if are you still going to get into like him working at NASA? I'm about to go into paperclip. Okay. I'm, so I'm doing a timeline. He's there. He's about to come over. I guess at the end of the day, I was like, what if if I had to give up playing music, um, wh would I do it um, if I didn't want to be a part of the, the Nazi organization thing, whatever? Um, are you laughing over there? Why are you laughing at this? Because I looked this? up Engl English to German. I looked up Waffle Detective, and it's literally Waffle Detective. Okay, well, good for you. I appreciate you laughing. <laughs> Otherwise, I was getting a complex thinking about you know, being a I'm Nazi. I'm being a Nazi <sighs> musician. I tell you what, let's move on to Project Paperclip. That'll be a lot more interesting than me <laughs> vibing here and getting a conscious of, a conscientious about oh, you laughing time. over there. We got time. Do you want to continue here? This comes from the woman who says, I'm running out of notes. Anyway, well, we'll, we'll fill it with callers. Let, um, so we know what happened with a war. Eventually, we won. Now, I don't know how one would view this. Was this brilliant or sneaky or what? So, at the end of the World War II, Von Braun and a 
large number of his scientist associates surrendered to the Americans. Now, here's a strange, this is, this is really odd. Uh, well, maybe it's not odd. Maybe it's real. I don't know. Von Braun underwent a religious conversion, he says, which appeared to be deeply felt. His biographer, Neufeld, points out Von Braun may have done this to pacify his guilt, but there wasn't any really evidence of his guilt, not outwardly that I suppose anyone could tell. But again, they say Von Braun chose not to look back on that time. So everybody, by now, I think the majority of the public knows what Operation Paperclip was. That's just the, the name they gave to bring them over here. Okay. The I, surrendered I, scientists. I wanted to make sure you at least explained that that's what that was. Yeah. These were brilliant German scientists that surrendered to the end of World War II. They were brought over with their families and set up in nice places with great jobs. Is that fair? I don't know. You know, keep in mind that, you know, America brought a lot of these scientists over here, but so did the Soviet Union. They brought their share over there. I mean, so did, but did we say to them, come over here or go to jail or worse, or we're going to well, hand you well, over? Yeah, or? In this hand, you can go to prison for the rest of your life. Or in this hand, you could go ahead and continue your work and, and kind of go from there. There were about 500 of them. Mm -hmm. And they all either went to White Sands Proving Ground in New Mexico, Fort Bliss here in Texas, or to Huntsville, Alabama. And they all um, started working on guided missiles and ballistic missile technology. So I guess America was not going to get caught with their pants down ever again. Mm -hmm. So separate from Paperclip was an even more secret effort to capture German nuclear secrets, equipment, and personnel called Operation Alsos. Another American project gathered German experts in cryptography, T-I-C-O-M, uh, the United States Bureau of Mines employed seven German synthetic fuel sciences at Fisher Trops, whatever, chemical plant in Louisiana and in Missouri in 1946. So it wasn't just rocket scientists. All right, so he gets here to America. He, uh, I think he started over in maybe El Paso. Uh, he worked, again, right right away into ballistic missiles pretty much what he was doing before and to carry nuclear weapons and be, he became the director in uh, 52 by the way nasa was formed in 1950 and von braun became a director there in 52. they let him go back to germany get married and bring his wife and her parents back to america to live that's awful big of us i think considering he's considered a war criminal but Again, he still has this notion of he wants to get into space. He wants to get to the stars. He wants to get to the moon. He doesn't, it seems like he doesn't give a crap about this weapon stuff. He relentlessly campaigned for more governmental support for space flight. And this is um, something I read in a journal article called 20th Century Faust in the American Scientist Journal. Uh, just a side note here, his biographer points out that Von Braun and Teller, the other famous German scientist, Teller, were the scientists that were in the mind of, oh, why do I not have that here? We're in the mind of the speech that warned us about the military industrial complex. You remember the beware, the mill industrial. Mm -hmm. Eisenhower. Eisenhower said that, and Eisenhower was thinking about Von Braun and Teller when he said it. That's a little unnerving. You know, Eisenhower said public policy itself could be cap the captive of a scientific technological elite. Those words are kind of disturbing. And so when he said, beware the industrial complex, it could be a captive of the scientific elite. He was thinking of Von Braun and Teller. So... What did Eisenhower know? Now, what I've read on Von Braun when he was here, you know, maybe he, he 
honestly did just want to go into space and leave all this weapon crap behind. But it strikes me, as he said, he was very culturally adapt adaptive. It seems like he could read this read the culture well here. So I have to wonder, did Von Braun play up the military aspects of all his um, projects that he dreamed up to appeal to his bosses, which is like NASA and the military and whoever, just so he could keep his bacon? Because is that what the guys in charge wanted to hear? So maybe that's what he said. Well, hey, I can build this and here are the military implications for it. But he's not really caring about the military part. So, but once he got here, he was really freed up to really start publishing papers and looking into his own ideas. So, when the U.S. Army asked his opinion about the threat in the Soviet Union in 1946, not surprisingly, Von Braun played it up, suggesting the development of large multi-stage rockets and missiles and space boosters. Does that sound familiar? Says, facing the existence of atomic bomb and the fact that such a circling rocket represents an ever-present threat above the head of the most almost every nation, that nation which reaches this goal and possesses an overwhelming military superiority over other nations. So he's saying, you better build it now before someone else does, I guess. Let's do it now. So, um, And you know, they... They went over there and launched Sputnik in Russia, so we weren't having that. So Von Braun assembled yeah, gonna, a team. I, I was going to say, Go ahead. Uh, I'm trying to remember when Sputnik was launched. I know it was, what, uh, what 1951? Uh, no, I could be – I know it was in the 50s. I just can't put my finger on But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was that uh, catalyst, if you will, that uh, kind of lit a fire under uh, America – um, yeah, well, that, in that's fact, right it, up von Braun's alley too. Yeah, yeah, Sputnik was Sputnik One was launched in 1957, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 to be honest with you, there was a growing perception that America was just lagging behind the Soviet Union in, in, in the emergent space race. So I guess Sputnik kind of kicked that off as the space race because and, later on you have yeah. Kennedy setting the mandate to put a man on the moon um by the end of the uh because uh, by the time you made that speech it was the 60s so by at least by the 70s well that... because in the 50s right after the war and up to 1960 mm -hmm. space flight and the idea of going to space was seen as silly and frivolous and a utopian dream and not worth our time mm -hmm. that was that was the culture here right so when they got sputnik up here i'm like oh we better get our crap together so we launched explorer one and this was one of von braun's projects they didn't want those Russians having all that glory with that silly Sputnik. So, as you said, it wasn't until President Kennedy got into office that Von Braun gets his chance at building for space flight. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Apollo program was born. Mm -hmm. Neufeld points out Von, Dra Von Braun's true genius is at organizing and managing people and projects. We wanted to conquer space, so Von Braun got us there. He was also creative. Now, he wanted to go to space before the whole Sputnik thing. So in order to convince our government to invest, to fund it, he wanted to present a feasibility study, but he knew he had to do it in a way that would get their attention. So in 47, he wrote a sci-fi novel that was a fully worked out mission to Mars. So it was legit science around a story. He thought, Going to the moon was too easy, so he made this sci-fi novel that's a mission to Mars. So he's like, screw the moon. That's too simple. Mm -hmm. This is a 47. Right. So he wrote this novel called The Mars Project and actually tried to get it published, but book publishers are like, this is so bland and boring. There's these long scientific speeches. No one's going to read this crap. So... Uh, the government said, yeah, go ahead and publish that because there's no real secrets there. There's nothing top secret. Even they thought it was boring. So that didn't go over well. well. So you notice we didn't go to Mars back then. And so in 1960, he left, we, he left all that <laughs> and went, left the American Army to join the newly formed Marshall Space Flight Center, which he was a part of, uh, mm -hmm. the newly formed NASA. So over there, he developed something called the Saturn V rocket. 
this is the rocket that would launch all the Apollo missions into space. The Saturn rocket sent our guys to the moon. So this masterpiece of his plans, uh, that was not the thing that he was most wanting to do. The thing he most wanted to do, his, you know, piece de resistance was to have a manned space station that would serve as a base and an orbiting reconnaissance platform and battle station for achieving space superiority over the Soviet Union. So much for being a communist sympathizer, he's like, let's just get up in space and annihilate them if they come near us. You know, that's mm-hmm. my thinking. So, did he want a space station because he wanted, it was a challenge and he knew he could do it and he wanted to do it, but did he put the military aspect on it because he knew that's what, that's the ang- that's the only angle that would get it going? Mm-hmm. It would get his piece of the pie of what he wanted up there. Right. He knew that he could build it, but it, it came down to having the funding to make it happen. So, looking back, it wasn't until the mid-1960s that people began to question his role in the Third Reich. Mm-hmm. So now you just have this, he's over here, he's doing good, he's making progress, and his past is starting to catch up. So... He wants to do this this orbiting space platform. So now, did we impose these military agendas on him saying, well, can you imagine them saying something like, well, Von Braun, do anything you want, but just make sure everything you do is for security and there's a way to weaponize it or keep America secure. Maybe that's the only way he kept his job. I don't know. I didn't get, I didn't see the evidence of that in my research so far, but it's not in-depth research. So... Maybe he really was gung-ho for us. Maybe he really did like the American way of life, and he just really wanted to protect it because he was grateful. I don't know. But he did see the space station as the ultimate weapon against the Soviet Union. But it never came to fruition, of course. So now, can you imagine if he, if Ronald Reagan was the president when Von Braun was at NASA, what they could do together? He would have gotten that man's orbital weaponized space platform don't you think well i know that back during reagan's time the big thing was the star wars initiative that's what i was thinking about Mm -hmm. so in the 50s as i told you it was seen as silly and utopian to try to get into space until this is a really big deal collier's magazine uh somebody went to visit with von braun and to write this article and gave him a a guest piece to write to go with it. This quote unquote pun intended launched Von Braun into sort of a celebrity status now. Mm -hmm. This article laid out the ideas for his space station in a feature piece written by Von Braun called Crossing the Last Frontier. And so while this was getting published, Von Braun went and did some speeches and he made some appearances while the publisher of Collier's made press kits and press releases. One That included this big window display on Fifth Avenue in New York that's like, you know, America will get into space or something like that. It says, um, I guess this lit up people's imagination and got Washington's attention about a super weapon in space. Now, Newfield said, for all that Von Braun was brilliant with technology and planning, he did not predict what was coming after him, Mm -hmm. which was the power of thermonuclear weapons in the oncoming age of ICBMs. He, I guess he didn't care about that type of thing. He didn't, you know, it was past his time. But uh, Von Braun was adamant that though our, in, our enemies would not be able to launch a vertical missile to hit a space station, that uh, we'd be able to see that coming and knock it down. And again, there's that word superiority, superiority. I'm like, was that drilled into him over by the Nazis? You know, not, you know I may maybe like digging for holes here. But again... What if he was genuinely trying to help and he was, or he was just trying to keep his bosses happy? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was NASA's deputy administrator on planning in 1970, and he eventually resigned in 72. He died in 1977 at the age of 65. Now, of pancreatic cancer. Yes. You know, you know, if I can interject here, I only had two more. Well, go ahead. I only have two more things. Now, here's another quote I found. 
History remembers NASA's most famous rocket scientist as an advocate of peaceful space exploration. And another point I found was World War II had forced von Braun to abandon the German nationalist parts of the conservative worldview he had inherited from his father. But he remained conservative by instinct and easily transferred his allegiance to the United States as the bulwark of Western culture. I don't know. So was he a Nazi sympathizer? Was he doing what he had to do to get by? Was he on board over here? Was he trying to keep us happy or what? Well, well let me go ahead and sum it up uh, with some of these points, uh, Sir Lana. Was he charming? Yeah, he was always charming. I mean, he had a way to to get around with people, and so he was definitely charming. Apolitical? Maybe. Uh, was he driven? Heck yes, because, man, you talk about going from nothing to landing a, a man on the moon. That's pretty driven, if you ask me, to actually get that done. Was he a great scientist? Yes, we can agree that he was a great scientist. Was he a Nazi SS officer? He definitely, Technically, yes. He definitely was. And, and here's the ultimate question here. Was he an American hero? Well... Space obsessed opportunist, willing to work with anyone, give him the money to continue his work, regardless if it costs the lives of those in the way of his okay. militarized rockets. That's another quote. Is that before he he got to America or after, or before? Or is that where you're quoting? Because at the end of the day, I think he was a good American hero. I mean, he gave us the space age, which is uh, without the space age, you can't have space boy. Well, and so on that magical okay. note, let's take the break, and then you can go when we come back, which I'm, re I'm sure we're ready. Ding, 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 ding for final battle with Space Boy and Solana. And don't touch that dial. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. The epic battle begins this Friday, Friday, Friday. Direct from ringside at Laser Death Melt. And bot versus Bot in Galaxy's Two Ton Weight Championship, where your challenger, Good Bot, will face the reigning champion, Bad Bot. You are terminated. Reserve seating starting at $30. Two drink minimum, where ladies don't get in free. This is an SBU production. You're listening to Space Boy Universe.
That stuff in my mouth, and I realized that there's still more music to play. Here are your Space Boy and Sir Lana. Sir Lana, uh, Sir Lana, she's gonna kill me someday Why? In, the, in the robot apocalypse. Not you, Savannah, the uh, the SBUN you said my name. robot. I said, Sir Lana, Savannah is going oh. to kill me. Robot is going to kill me. Anyway. Um, so when we last left, uh, things were starting to percolate between Sir Lana and myself. <laughs> and uh, but uh, apparently she's got a few more notes here. So no. go ahead. No, I've got no. Cookie. No, you go ahead and eat your cookie and swallow it, and go ahead and finish what you have to say. Hmm. We're not professionals. We're just entertainers. Well, some people say Von Braun, while he was you know over there in his homeland. Joining the Nazi party to realize his scientific ambitions was a Faustian bargain. A deal, with, a deal with the deal devil. with the devil. You know, Faust dealt with the devil to get all the knowledge in the universe. So, mm-hmm. um, exchanged his soul to the devil for unlimited knowledge. Well, von Braun already had the knowledge. It's just it, the only way to get his stuff out of his head was to join the Nazi party and witness all these atrocities. Apparently. So, yeah, another quote, I think it's shameful that a man who created powerful bombs for the Nazis, which were used to kill innocent civilians, is idolized in our small Al- Alabama town. This is Huntsville, where he worked. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a brilliant man who totally changed the trajectory of the American space industry, but we as a society choose to focus solely on the good things he achieved. We do a disservice to the enslaved Jews who built the rockets he designed and the innocent men and women and children of England who felt the wrath of those weapons. So, and then you you look at another uh, source that says, some hold his participation in the Nazi war effort and necessitates classifying him as a villain. While his actions during the war were monstrous, he wasn't motivated by some inherent evil or personal belief in the Nazi ideology. He was motivated by his childhood obsession with space flight a somewhat uncritical patriotism and a naive grasp of the ramifications of his actions in creating one of the war's deadliest weapons. So he was too stupid and obsessed to see what what was going to happen. Um, he's either purveyor of death and destruction or the bringer of wonder and inspiration. You know, I keep bringing it back to Star Trek because so many episodes that we watch deal with deal this type of dichotomy. Um, do you believe people can be redeemed when they're given a sec chance? Possibly, yes. Now, case granted, by case basis. Granted, I you know, taking into account, yes, his rockets killed a lot of people. 
And, and he was working during a time where many people were oppressed and killed off because... Why are you laughing again? I just had this thought for a segment I'm trying called, to be serious. I'm sorry. Can you hold your thought? I just had this thought for a little segment called, What historical figure would you like to punch in the face? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, so I'm, I'm trying to convey... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm trying to fit, somewhat defend him in some aspect. Okay. And, and and what I'm saying is that yeah sure he was a part of uh, of history that on a team that uh, uh, did terrible atrocities to people and you know and and donned a uniform that when we look at it today um, people you know turn away in disgust because of what it represents to them um, I'm not saying that I mean should we say that uh, he was definitely involved. And the actual, um, you know, concentration camps or, you know, the destruction of these people. Um, let me get my thoughts together here. Sure, sure. I won't interrupt. Oh, you know, if I guess, I guess I'm lost for work. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Solana. What? What happened? No, I just, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm not trying to promote the fact that, uh, you know, he is a saint. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like to think in some ways that he kind of redeemed himself in some ways. And when he came to America. I, I get mean, you. It's, uh, you just I mean, don't know the heart of the man, you know. I, I think what happened in Germany during that time is terrible. It's a terrible thing that was done to many people. I mean, Auschwitz, uh, uh, I can't even Auschwitz. say, yes, thank you, was a terrible stain on humanity and what the Germans did to those people. Uh, it was ma mainly the Jews. I think it's it's beyond words that I can even say because it just gets me flustered. Well, that's what that quote was about, like, not seeing all of his past as a disservice to those people, but mm -hmm. we don't know but you know, the circumstances at the same he was time, under at the same time is like you know what if I was working on some you know what if I was a brilliant scientist and and all I wanted to do was to bring mankind into an age where we could go see other planets and and go uh, to to the stars and and do all that stuff and yet uh, I couldn't because in order to possibly uh, realize a dream. I had to be a part of a group of people because they were going to use part of that dream. That's really... Now, that strikes me. Maybe this is another way to look at Ron Ron. Was he so freaking obsessed with his dream, he was going to do anything to get there, even if it was this go through this question where like, hey, they're going to realize this dream for me, but in order to do it, terrible human atrocities have to occur. How badly do you need your dream to sacrifice other people's lives? Well, when he came to America, did he do the same? I don't get what you're saying. Did he do what did he sacrifice? Uh, I mean, obviously, the technology uh, was used to make IBC. I CDMs think later, I later am on. so discombobulated right now on this subject matter, especially um, made uh, missiles. Uh, you know the technology was there to make missiles intercontinental ballistic missiles um you know to destroy to nuke um people i mean they we they weren't made under inhumane circumstances that the rockets over there in germany were built in underground factories near um the german town of nordhausen uh at the middlework um, so underground I, I get, in a I'm, concentration what I'm trying to get at camp. is uh, what is the difference I mean in the sense that hold on you're saying the end product still kills people whether it was here or in America <clears throat> yes I don't know the only difference in this situation is he didn't get an opportunity to build a spaceship to take the Nazis or the Germans for that matter that's what I'm saying when he space. came over here was he just doing what he had to do to stay out of prison to have some freedom, get paid, bring his family over, and just keep us happy by building weapons until words, he could get what he wanted. Did he do what he did in order to keep himself alive? Yeah. In other words, was he being selfish in his own 
sense both, that, on both sides too uh, uh, to keep his family alive to do what was necessary it's like well i want to do this i don't have a choice i better join the nazi so party I guess, I guess the ultimate question is would you or even the space cadets out there that are listening tonight yeah quit picking on me would you do uh what is necessary to keep you and your family alive in fact i hate you I, I don't know how this is going to go well um i'm reminded of walking dead and Rick and what he's had to do to keep him and his son alive through this whole process. I'm not giving any spoilers for this season, but he did what was necessary to keep his family alive as much as he could. And so there, it goes to show you that uh, there are people that will do what is necessary to keep their family alive or people that they love or even themselves so that they can live to see another day. Could it be that he was in that sim similar situation? He just was trying to live to see another day, but in addition- And how come we don't know to this day? Did he never say? Here's uh, musician Tom Lurher parodied his Von Braun's past a song, which included the lines, when the rockets are up, who knows where they come down? That's not my department, says Werner Von Braun. And you're saying uh, in this situation that he should know. He should. You know, he could have filled him with confetti instead of, you know. Well, that is the dilemma that we face here with him in the sense that um, um, good, bad. Um, he's been on two sides of the coin here. Uh, he said he developed that stuff, but he certainly wasn't telling them to go use it in warfare, but he knew what they were being used for. So you'd sound like. <laughs> Round and round. Well, true. That's the moral dilemma that we that he would probably have to face. So I think I mean, it's obvious we how, don't. How far are you willing to go to to sacrifice your own moral being to one keep yourself alive um, in, in a situation? Here's the, the upshot of this broadcast: you and I are not going to have an answer for this. What we're going to agree to disagree? Well, we don't have an answer. We don't have an. Right. We can't judge this guy. Will agree it's not black and white. Insufficient data. <laughs> was he a member of the Nazi party? They said he was an official card yeah, carrying. Just, just like I but was. he says he didn't have a choice. Yeah, well, think about it. A, a lot of Germans didn't have a choice. Yeah, that's when, true. When that, when that uh, took over the country, you know, when Hitler rose to power, you know, a lot of people did not have a choice. Well, Maybe they did. When you talk about, I, I go back to Schindler's List. Uh, he had a choice. He could have just turned those Jews over and and uh, let them die. I really want to watch that. And, it, but yet he he investment. chose to protect them, and and you know, those Jews survived. You know, says, go ahead. Uh, again, his biographer. The real moral issue around von Braun is his involvement in the use of concentration camp labor for the V two rocket production. He was involved in the administrative decisions about deploying the slave labor on his projects and was in the underground tunnels when prisoners were present. So there's room to argue about how responsible he was and whether he could have done anything, but his behavior implicates his, in crimes against humanity. That's the issue. I guess I just don't like the argument of, uh, I made a gun, but I didn't use it to kill somebody. I just don't I knew like you're gonna, I kn See, that's the thing I knew you were going to say. <laughs> and I was worried about the gun can of worms because that's a hot topic right now. I did right. not want to go there. Um, but it's a perfectly valid um, analogy. Because you and I are you know, and <laughs> strictly for defensive purposes but uh look I just used the gun analogy in this situation because he built a weapon um yeah I built the rocket but I what didn't about Tesla for all the stuff he put together of course now he wanted that for good and there was he, a found a way to the use of scalar weapons right right God only knows what they're doing with that right right supposedly they're knocking UFOs out to but you know uh, unlike uh, uh um this uh the gentleman we're talking about tonight and versus tesla you know tesla wasn't contracted by, peaceful, by yeah. the military he no. 
he was building tech. Uh, he was having to, well, he was dealing with a dirt bag of Edison the capitalists. And, and the capitalists, you know, we, you know, good and well, the military got his stuff when he died. They took all yeah, his well, research. I think what was it? The FBI came oh, heck, in there heck, yeah. and because they were worried about the well, I don't know the FBI was around yet, but it was whoever that was, you know, at the time. Uh, somebody swooped in, and I'm sure one of our space cadets would mention that. Um, is that um, they swooped in and they g gathered all the tech, uh, the papers and all that stuff um, that he had had, and um, um, when he passed away, Tesla. But you know, Tesla, like I said, he wanted mankind to reach a new enlightenment. He wanted to bestow the knowledge he had learned with electricity and give it to f for free. And could you imagine mm -hmm. that kind of free technology? Um, he was not in the same what it's free real estate <laughs> <laughs> nobody gets that but you and i <laughs> yes so uh, but you know it is a, a seesaw effect when you're talking about him being in the nazi party versus coming to america uh do you feel he redeemed himself some may feel like no, because ultimately he was responsible for all those deaths in Germany, regardless if he pulled the trigger or not. And, you know, I guess that's... How about this? One night in early March of 1944, he drank too much at a party and spoke too freely in what he thought was just a casual conversation. He told fellow partygoers that he foresaw the war ending badly for Germany and added that all he'd ever wanted to do with his rockets was launch them into space. Admission to this was akin to treason, which is a crime punishable by death. Von Braun was arrested weeks later, and while he was never incarcerated, his first indication that he wouldn't be safe in his home country when the war ended. So that was the arrest. Um, I guess like it was like, oh, you don't think we're going to win the war? That's treason. That's why they got him for tre on treason, but they, they needed him too much for him to sit in jail. Mm -hmm. Right. So. They just want to scare him, I guess. Um, but this says Von Braun was attracted by the opportunities America promised and suspected that the U.S. military would support his continued research into rocketry. He suspected. But he decided he wanted to surrender and build rockets for America when he heard Hitler was dead on May 1st, 1945. Seems kind of rosy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So... He elected an emissary from his group, his younger brother Magnus, to go find and surrender to the American soldiers. So he actively went to find us to surrender to us. So he was like saving his bacon before somebody could come get him. He was in the hands of the American soldiers within months. And the U.S. government made him an offer that he had already hoped for. So he was hoping if he surrendered, we would make him this cool deal. And we did give us an American version of the V2. And he did. And he, but he got an opportunity to get to the stars or at least the, and, the and space. The, uh, the, 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 um, space platform he wanted to build. Like gargantuan one. Yes. It looks strangely similar to what you see in 2001 mm -hmm. space odyssey. Yeah. Now, I didn't read any parallels that mention that movie, but you have to wonder. So, um, it was the Collier's Magazine had a, an illustration. Huge donut-shaped orbital space stations uh, setting off from missions to the moon, launching space spacecraft from there. Again, this would launch missiles, too, uh, but it would be manned. So, in 19, March 9, 1955, Von Braun appeared on the first episode of Walt Disney's Tomorrowland TV series. Viewers saw... Von Braun's vision with uh, come to life with stunning animation. So he brought that vision to NASA in the 60s, and the NASA's path to the moon uh, deviated from Von Braun's vision, but he nevertheless achieved his dream by getting people into space. And um, he did get some celebrity here, but it could not overshadow what it couldn't overshadow the Nazi connection. Sure. So, I mean, but for some way he covered it, he covered it up for a while, a long while, but it wasn't until the 60s and 70s it started cropping up again. And now that he's been long gone, you know, people talk about it, I think, more. 
Well, I think it's important that um, regardless of how the coin flips, that we talk about you know both sides of those coins. But it says of of where where he where, where he started off, where he you know the Germany aspect and and coming to America. I mean, it's an important part of history to learn. But where do these researchers who talk about him, like okay, this statement. He had no apparent moral quandary or crisis of conscience aligning himself with the Nazi party in the 30s, nor did he labor over the decision to turn his back on his homeland and immigrate to America. How do they know that? I mean, did he ever say that? Do we know what's in the mind of this man? Well, you know, there was a time when you had to give sources uh, to prove what you're saying was actual factual. Mm -hmm. um, um, so... I agree with you. Where is the 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 undeniable proof in that situation? If I had had more time, I might have probably uncovered that. I just that's part of the fun challenge and slight downside to the show is the fact that we do have these eight to five jobs that we have to go work, and it get it gets in the way of my research time. But I try to get. That's why I try to focus on one aspect or so we have jobs so that we can work longer and so we can pay for the universe so we can do shows and then we go back to work to work longer anyway Solana, we're, we're coming up for the top of the hour and i want to do it now i, I want to go ahead and do People that we're like clawing to try to get to the <laughs> to the number <laughs> and i was gonna say could you bring up the uh the, the number to the audience i will give you that magic number which is eight three three two zero two s b u n or seven two eight six go ahead and repeat that, that again. number again is eight three three two zero two seven two eight six yeah so uh, when we come back uh, we'll take your calls we'll talk about uh, the topic at hand um you know also if you want to talk a little bit about art bell and um, some of your thoughts and prayers and wishes and and just good feelings about when art was around um we could definitely talk about that too so uh don't touch that dial i'm sure our space cadets have a lot to talk about Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. Greetings, Space Cadets. Let's see what's in the sky tonight in the Space Boy Universe. Tonight, in the eastern sky, we have Space Boy Universe rising above the horizon in glorious splendor. And in the west, we can see Solanus Majoris, which is visible at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, just below the K-28 belt. So keep your eyes on the sky and listen to Space Boy Universe.
you are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lana. All right, all right, all right. Um, so we have our first caller of the evening, uh, Fran. It's Fran. Uh, man, I'm so excited to hear from Back you. Back from the ether. Yes. Uh, so how are you, my dear? I'm doing okay. Um, things have been a little bit crazy for quite a while. Uh, I had a few health problems going on, and I couldn't get even online for quite a while. And it's been really weird. I've just been trying in to do what I can do. And I was so happy that I finally was able to be here and listen to you guys. I was really happy. We're to ha- hear you. Yeah, I'm we're, thrilled yeah, to hear yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. You know, we were both saying during the, the break, um, you know, we would still periodically see you on Facebook pop up and we would both say, hey, there's Fran, you know, so. And sometimes people I've noticed in this day and age will go on social media sabbaticals away from social media. And I fully understand right. and respect that. Sometimes you've got to detox. Unfortunately, because we do the show, we can't do that. And we, we, he and I may have a little problem. <laughs> we, we can't get it. We can't get away from it because we we're, we maybe we, we we may have an addiction. I don't know. Right. But, um, when when you have a presence online, you can't. And I'm I'm just an individual that is in there every once in a while. And to me, uh, while I was uh, I don't know what to call it incapacitated, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like. Two months uh, on the couch, not being able to do anything or call or anything. And I kept seeing stuff every once in a while online when I would be able to get up and check it out. And I was like, oh my God, I am so lost without you guys. But I really love the fact that you're still here and still doing it and everything is good yes it is i mean i i you're one of those we'll be here one of those for no other reason that it irritates people one of those few uh, space cadets uh, <laughs> that that realizes that uh, you know we're going to be on our the, going into our third season mm-hmm. our third year uh this september and right. you know we're it's it's been amazing the roadblocks and the the barriers that we've had to overcome but at the end of the day, you know, we've continued to broadcast and, uh, you know, you're yeah. one of those original. And we, we understand, we understand life gets in the way, life gets in the way of this show a ton um, for people. And we're not requiring anyone to swear a blood oath or listen. <laughs> you don't, you don't listen every weekend and Chris she, Paint chat. And you're not a space cadet. She says that, but I require a blood oath. That is so funny. <laughs> but that yeah, so we, funny. we totally get it. Sure, Lana, people can come and go. Please do not, do not make me. Wear a blood oath. <laughs> What's the Klingons do? They they cut their hands open and they mesh their blood. Don't they do that? I don't know. Did Worf do like, that with somebody? Uh, to become a house of Martok? Uh, supernatural. <laughs> the uh, Winchester boys do something like that too. Something I don't like know. That. I've never seen that show, but. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, we're not requiring that level of loyalty from our listeners. I mean, y'all are free to come and go, you please. You can even listen to other people's well, broadcasts. As long as you don't tell us about it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are you guys going to make it out to CITV or what? Probably No. Me not probably not in my lifetime, no. Um I I oh, now that damn. they've moved moved to the air conditioned arena, uh, I might consider I know. Uh, consider sometime in a future um, designated at a certain point. You off? <laughs> what? what? I'm pissed. The, the, I'm like, oh my god! I like the heat. No, you know when I, when we're out at contact, it's like desert heat, and you go inside and yeah, it's a little bit cooler. Yeah, not too bad. 
and everybody else is bitching about it, and I'm going, what the hell? Now I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's going to be air conditioned, and I'm going to have to carry a blanket with me <laughs> all the time. Well, I know, I know Serlana doesn't do well with the heat, and, um, no, you know, I was okay, but, uh, you know, I just the idea enjoy, of, of moving to the it. new venue with AC sounds delightful, and so, you know, at some point, you know, Space Boy will make a journey back out there. I, I will have... send Space Boy out there. It's only, there's only enough budget for one, so. Yeah. Ship I mean... him away. <laughs> Ship him away. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you put it that way. I'm going to send that guy out there. <laughs> but, you know, he's the face of Space Boy Universe. Funny. That's the appropriate person to send. Exactly. You know, and to me, uh, I was not going to go, and then I had a friend of mine buy me a ticket, and I went, okay, that's very cool. And I thought I was going, and now uh, my propane company killed me, <laughs> and I'm like, nope, not going, so this year I won't be there unless there's a reversal of fortune, you know, somebody would have to come up with uh, a couple of hundred bucks for me to get out there. Well, you could do I'm a like, quick GoFundMe, uh, get me the CITD uh, thing. <laughs> oh, no, fuck that. I'm, oh, <laughs> did I say that F Bomb. Don't worry about I'm it. We'll, we'll edit it in post. <laughs> <laughs> well, before yeah, before okay. we let you run off into the great white yonder, uh, the blue yonder, um, is there anything you want to say something about the show tonight or, or any uh, anything about art and, or, you know? Well, that's, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about was art. Um, I started listening back in 94, mm -hmm. 95, to Art Bell, and my mother was the one who told me about the guy, and I got hooked in, and I listened forever, and I was hooked. You know, I had been a sci-fi person and really into all this stuff since I was 12. And then Ooh. all of a sudden, boom, now I have these people that are online. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is awesome. And it, it's been so amazing to me. And that's why I really love going to CITV, going to the stuff. And Art Bell was the guy who really got me hooked in. And I can't even believe that he's gone. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a hard pill. Uh, yeah, it was way oh. too soon. Uh, it, it seemed like yeah. he had more mileage yeah. to go, and uh, it almost seems like he was starting to kind of nibble coming back and making some more broadcast. Right. And uh, um, it was... You know, just really caught, uh, you know, a lot of people off guard, you know, and, uh, uh, but uh, I yeah, totally agree it, with you. it freaked me out. It just, I'm lost. I'm going, oh my God, where did Art go? He's not here anymore. Mm -hmm. How does that work? <laughs> you know, the guy has to be, well, he's out there somewhere. You know, he's he's become he's, one with the universe. Yeah, he's out there traveling around, going. Oh, now I understand. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah. So. Well, Fran, we love you to death. But it really hurt my heart. Yes, and for him to go, it, it hurts a lot of people. So, Fran, thanks for calling. Um, you know, uh, hopefully you get better and better yeah. with each passing day and and uh, stop with us and explore so. with us. Me too. We miss you, oh, and yeah. we, but we love it when you can come by. I try. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good night, you guys. Love you. Love you bye too. Bye-bye.
Bye. All right. So, Fran, it was good to hear from her. Um, the you, new number's working. That's why I'm doing a happy uh, well, dance. You, you got, um, so you're, you're waiting to click them on before we click them on, right? What do you mean by that? I'll explain later. Do we have any other people in the box? Well, somebody's threatening to call, yeah. Okay. So Our marriage counselor's threatening to call because I think she's worried. Uh, worried about what? Well, you know, the usual. Uh, about... Uh, um, the interesting conversation that we have in tonight. I mean, you can't have a good, it's, you know, our conversations should be the standardization of how everyone should talk about things oh, in general. Oh, well, that's smug. Well, no, I mean, you know, at least we don't deteriorate into a point where. We do, we just don't do it on air. Oh, uh, well, still, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just going to say this, and I know how she's going to react, ladies and gentlemen, is that we still love each other. You're quiet over there. And see, you started laughing. And see, yeah, sure. Anyway, um, so yeah, in my back, stabbing me into the back. <laughs> yeah, that number is eight three three two zero two seven two eight six. And of course, if you don't want to call a toll free number, you can dial seven one three seven zero one five two one four. Ready? So go ahead, we'll call her. You're on the air. Now they are. Call her. You're on the air. Boy, that was quick. Whoa. I wish everybody would answer the phone. Man, you talk about <laughs> you know? stealth. Holy crap, Dino. Wow. <laughs> How are you tonight, Dino? Well, I'm confused. You know, you keep changing these phone numbers. What, don't you pay your bill? This is like the no. first time. I don't, know, I don't know where to call anymore. The reality is we... We start with uh, we've never we've never lost the seven zero one five two one four number. We're always we've, gonna have we're it. We're always gonna have that. So but you call it, it'll still work. The, the thing is that we've been mad as a hatter when it comes to Skype. Now we've had a program that we could use that's web based to manage our call system, but we've not been, you know, a hundred percent into it. Tonight we made it official like we've got to do this because the only way to, that we can make this happen is to go out and buy expensive equipment and get phone, phone lines, lines which and, we didn't and want to do. we didn't want to do because we're not we're Land not lines, you know. we're not at that level yet we're still at the kind of like the not novice but not professional level we're kind of we're in the between duct tape level. yeah the duct tape level <laughs> well we've got it we'll to where no we got it to where even if you call the 713 number you can go ahead and call it. You're going to get automatically forwarded to this number, so mm -hmm. I will get your call. And then, of course, the number that oh, well. the the uh, eight three three number that she's given out is a toll free number. So yeah. it's it, it behooves everyone to call that number because it's toll free. But you know, for those who you still want to use a seven one three, do you know that you can? I'll yeah. get it. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, that's great. It's great to know, and and uh, you are on a whole nother level. So <laughs> you'll keep moving up. Uh, I want to ask, so I don't need to unblock my private uh, number when I call the 833 because that will automatically display, right? Any 800 yeah, number I've, displays. Yeah, I'm seeing a number. It's probably not your actual number. I think it's a, it could be a random thing that gets generated when it forwards. So. Is it a 415 area code? It could be. Are you saying uh, that? I'm being well, vague anyhow. to protect the <laughs> identity of our caller. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, I figure most 800 numbers, even if they're 833 or whatever, I think do read your number, whether it's blocked or not. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's good to know. That'll be a couple more less digits to dial. I wanted to say hi to all the space cadets. I haven't talked to Gene in a while. And, he says hi. You know, a lot's been going on, but uh, I want to tell everybody out there, I don't know how, I don't know if it's age, I don't know if it's my active lifestyle at times, but uh, that pain that I had for three weeks uh, in the kind of right above the, the pelvis in the rear. I thought it was a kidney. I thought it was an infection. And I finally found out my insurance cover just for a $15 copay. I could go to two or three different wonderful chiropractors right in my neighborhood. Wow. And when I finally did that after three visits over a period of about a week, the pain is gone. I'm sleeping again and my movement's back. So when you get pinched nerve from doing something, I used to think chiropractors were wacko, but uh, some of them can really help. Let me ask you this, Dino. Um, you know I called you, uh, I, I don't know how long ago, but it seems kind of interesting. 
about a month. Uh, uh, was it about a month ago when yeah. I was just I called? No, it was about two or two or three weeks, uh-huh. and I tried to call back and uh-huh. I couldn't. Yeah, you know. yeah, I it was like you know out of the blue. I was like, uh, you know, I felt like calling you. I know that sounds bizarre. Hey, I just wanted to call Dino, just check up on him, and uh, and. You know, I got his message, and I thought, well, he's probably wow. out having a little vino, maybe a little steak or something like that. He's, you know, different time zones. But, you know, for some reason, I was just compelled to just call and check up on you. And I I, I think it's interesting that, you know, you weren't feeling too yeah. well. And so I think there was a kind of a cosmic, like, you know, I need to call Dino for some bizarre reason. And uh <laughs> And I'd I hate to make it sound like, you know, I'm some kind of stalker or something, but no, I just, I felt compelled. You're being remotely controlled. I, I don't know. <laughs> isn't, isn't, that in, isn't that interesting? You know, I mean, I'm not a super paranormal guy. I mean, I, I, I love what I believe are, are, you know, world visitors or on world visitors, mm-hmm. but I, I've never been real heavy into ghosts or mysticism other than astrology. I'm not, but the... The more experience I get in life, that that is really nice of you because there were a couple of nights I couldn't get sleep, and that's on one thing about me is I'm usually able to have a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. It keeps me young and vital. And when I don't, I'm a well. Most of us can be, but I am not one of these people who can work on no sleep. And isn't that interesting that you might have picked up because I literally on one or two nights, and it was on my day, I was off from work. I missed work, and then I, I made a, some several missteps. I think it had a lot to do with uh, Mercury retrograde, which, hooray, everybody, uh, early tomorrow morning it's going direct after three weeks. So anything that's been uh, communication breakdown or a screwed up thing should straighten itself out, hopefully. And that's what was going on. I literally mm-hmm. got up at 3 in the morning from tossing and turning about the time you called uh, you know, I, I could not sleep. I was almost going to cry because I, I was it was cold here that night. Mm. And I was cold in bed, and I was looking for a heating pad that I know I have. I couldn't find it, and I was walking because I, I couldn't lie in any position that didn't hurt. And it was a dull, aching pain. Anyway, I don't want to make this a, a <laughs> hospital show, but isn't that interesting how you might have picked up? Because I, I also, I think I've mentioned... Uh, Weird things have happened the last six to nine months that I've had three people who were my age, three guys, two who I went to high school with, all die suddenly mm-hmm. and kind of freaking me out. And I'm not that old, you know, but just the dying and then another two different friends in the last six months have moved totally out of the state I live in and uh, just suddenly. And these are people that are from my area, have been here for, you know, 50, 60 years. And one took off for Hawaii and bought a place there. Another took off for Texas that I told you about. And uh, I'll tell you the town not far from College Park. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's just it's weird when you've had a lifetime or even 20 years of a friendship and people are going away. It's just a unusual time for me. So that was very nice that you had a feeling <clears throat> and you acted on it by calling. Mm-hmm. You know, that was... You must have picked up on something. It makes me think that there is a connection to people who make a connection. You know? Well, yeah, like I said, it's just, uh, you know, I just can't explain it. It's just I was driving home from work. It was late in the evening, and, you know, all of a sudden I was like, you know what? Um, I, I felt like I just need to call Dino just to say, hey, how's it going? Check up on you and, um, and you know, just, you know, just see how you're doing, you know, and uh, um, I think it's interesting that kind of, correlates with with what you were just having you know two to three weeks ago which was about the same time of the call i was going to place but i'm glad that uh you're doing better it's it's good to hear that so dino um you know you're you're a man of many words um do you have any thoughts on the topic at hand tonight i know you must have something to say about arts passing well, I wasn't a big Art Bell fan. He was a little bit conservative for me, but I do bow to the fact that he really created the genre. And not only of uh, there already was some were some late night radio stations, but to be uh, you know nationwide and now with the internet even beyond, uh, you know the fact that he breached subjects that he believed in, and if they didn't believe in a subject. I don't think he was big on ridiculing somebody unless they were really 
mm-hmm. you know, cranking out the BS. So that I give him that, and and I was kind of shocked that not shocked, but surprised it happened. And uh, this is my personal note. I probably shouldn't say it at the time of someone's passing, but uh, you know, Heather Wade will carry on. But I I, I think that, uh, that I don't I don't understand. You know, people in their 60s having kids. You know, and that's the only thing I didn't understand. I mean, mm-hmm. some people think they'll live forever, I guess. And I I had a younger girlfriend at one point said, oh, you know, you can have kids still, you know. And at this point in life, you know, I don't want to. I think there, some kids are wonderful and, you know, and there's some beautiful things. But I don't want a kid growing up without a parent. Right. And I feel badly for his children. He's got like a one-year-old and, and, and he's got a 10-year-old. I mean, that's sad. You know, it's mm. just sad. And the, the mother is so young, she'll hopefully be around. But anyway, that I, I can't say much more about that. But if you, Von Braun, um, you know, you've already said it all. I've, I've seen several videos on him. I've heard people speak on him, read books. I mean, he was amazing. If he wasn't, uh, you know, a hybrid of some kind, <laughs> then he certainly was a brilliant guy. You but, you know, I... I I encourage people that listen to this show that let's take David Adair under our wing because he's in his own way kind of a Von Braun. He met him and mm-hmm. he's a little rocket scientist. Mm-hmm. Rocket scientist at 14 or 15 and and I like him. I've met him personally two times and and he's got a conscience and he blew up his own rocket because he knew it was going to be used for killing and, you know, he didn't want to help. And the thing he is that risk. and the thing is that Sir Lana loves his accent. Mm-hmm. I relate to him. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a very he's a southern gentleman. I'm going to tell you, he's a laid-back, kind of a, a teddy bear, pudgy guy, you know, and uh, but just easy to get along with. Now, if we had time, if you want, I can talk. I went to the little mini UFO con that I've gone to every year down in San Bruno, California, mm-hmm. um, and I got to talk with Graham Hancock off the record a few times. He's a, he's a nice guy, no BS. Some people think he is, but he's a Canadian who, uh, you know, he even told me Paul Hellyer, you know, that kind of jumped on the bandwagon kind of late with all this, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, UFO awareness stuff. Um, So I got to be with him, but unfortunately, David Adair didn't come this year. Mm -hmm. He Skyped in. Now, from what I hear, he's got a new girlfriend. Oh, really? Wonderful. That's what I heard, and maybe he didn't want to travel so much. I've tried to get in touch with him because I want to know what progress he's making with this um, uh, Shield Act initiative to try to get our, uh, you know, America's grid hardened. I mean, this, you know, they're talking about all this stuff now on the periphery of this. I heard, what did I hear? Was it Trump or somebody was talking about, you know, fixing this or fixing the? No, we've got to get our electrical grid hardened, or we're going to go back to the Stone Age if something bad happens. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so I want David Adair to come on your show again. I think you should ask him on. I think, to contact. Him. I think we're we're due to get him back on because uh, he enjoyed being on with us. He loved the audience, and uh, um, yeah. So we'll probably actively pursue that and see what's up. And uh, I got his number in my digits, so uh, you know we'll reach out to him. Yeah, and let me know off air too, because I, you know, he, I, I Dino, cer- he's a Dino certified person and a guest, <laughs> and uh, you know, because I've not only talked to him but met him, and he's, he's no BS, and he's, I love his. He can tell a longer stories than me and still come to a conclusion. He's wonderful, you mm-hmm. know. You're right. And, and and so I mean that was a good thing. And Graham Hancock was interesting. He was more interested in my the Bigfoot photos that I had put up. He he listened. He didn't, you know. And then, uh, you know, we have, uh, you've had her on the show, Lorraine there, you know. She's still, you know, running the MUFON uh, chapter and putting on this little event. And uh, and I, all I have to tell you, I wanted to tell you, but I was in pain. <laughs> but the very last thing, on Sunday night, we got out of there 1130 at night because the schedule got a little slow. And who was, who was giving a... Two, two and a half hour presentation very well, but uh, you know, the, the, the Paradigm Research Group, you mm-hmm. know, uh, you know, I want to tell you that, that Steve Bassett had his stuff together. He had his PowerPoint together, and I've heard some of the stuff before, and who was sitting right in the front row with me but Dan Sheehan. And, and 
The guy didn't crack a smile once. I mean, Bassett tries to be fun. He's serious, but mm -hmm. he tries to make some fun jokes. Steve Bassett was there, Graham Hancock. There were only about 25 of us that lasted. You know, thank God I didn't have to go to work the next day, and I still had some of that pain. But sitting in that hotel conference room till 11.30 on Sunday night, and Steve is still pumping it out. He still believes that this year, if, if somebody doesn't, come out with a little bit stronger, not soft disclosure, but a little harder disclosure, he thinks Putin may do it. Because, you know, he was over, Steve was over in uh, Russia for about a month this summer, I think. And he didn't get to meet Putin, but he talked to some people, and they put him on Russian television. And, you know, somebody better get their act together and start admitting more of this stuff so that they don't think we're all a bunch of kooks here, because there are just too many people that have too much evidence and the time is right. And that's just too bad that Art couldn't be around for it because he would have loved it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll love it, too, if someone will do a little bit more. Oh, and also, <laughs> the, what, three different videos that have now been released by To The Stars Academy. And I have seen all, you know, like most of these releases, there's always, I believe it, I don't believe it, it's BS, it's disinformation, and this is what's ruining the, experience now, but I did talk to a guy I work with who is a former Air Force jet fighter pilot, and he doesn't keep up too much with this, but he had seen the Tic Tac video, so I asked him last week, I go, what do you think about that video? Do you guys, when, you're, when you were pilots, some people have said the pilots on that tape are too informal. They're going, hey, dude, and all this stuff. And I've had other people say they wouldn't talk that way. They're a military people. And he said, no, no. He said, I, I saw nothing wrong with the way the pilots were communicating. And he said, uh, you know, that, that he believes the one pilot who came forth for the interview, which anybody can look up, I guess, on YouTube. And he said, I believe the guy. He said he had nothing to gain and everything to lose from coming out and saying that he saw something that he couldn't explain. He said he could have lost his career. And he said, so I believe the pilot that came forward that said he was one of those gun camera video pilots. So that's something to think about. You know, again, mm -hmm. another step that's not wacky. And then this document that I've gone back and forth on that six months ago or something, Heather Wade received from anonymous sources who were in the know, and, you know, <laughs> it just is another thing to make you think there might be some truth to some of these things. Uh, certainly more than people who I hear on show after show that come on, and they're great entertainment, and they tell us all kinds of things, but there's no there there. It's their word. <laughs> and so I'm leaning more toward, you know, make fun of it if you will, but gun camera footage is something, mm -hmm. you know? And a document that, you know, we've seen several documents, but a document that starts saying things that then other people are verifying. You know, wow. That's all I have to say. It, it's only, only, time, only time will tell in this situation, and I've often said this, and Sir Long agrees, is that, you know, disclosure is not going to come from the government. It's, it's going to come from the people. And uh, and I'm not talking about some rock star getting out there and and telling the truth. It's going to come from John Q. Public, uh, you know, and um, because uh, obviously they can't admit to the truth, the government that is, because I guess they feel it's going to be liability. But Dino, man, we love you, man, and I'm glad that you're doing better. And yeah. uh, you know, it's great to hear from. It, we haven't heard from our cadets in about three weeks. Yeah, it, it has been some time, but I'm glad that we're we're getting this uh, this new system up and running. As always, Daniel, you have my number, so anytime you need to reach out to me, it, it's always an honor. So you know, feel free to check up on me to make sure I'm okay. All right. Well, thank you, you guys, and you guys are sounding great tonight. So I'll let you move on with the show. <laughs> Thanks, Dino. Thanks, Dino. Bye. All right, so Whoa, he was uh, stealth. let's uh, go ahead and get to the bottom of the hour break, Serlana. And we still have a caller waiting. Yeah, yeah, so they'll have to wait until we come back, so. This is Patrick Stats Spore, and you're listening to Space Boy Universe.
You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. Get your game on Space Boy Universe. Level up with Space Boy Universe. No quarters, no problems. Play it at Space Boy Universe. Listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lana. You know, Sir Lana, uh, I just saw something on the Facebook wall. Apparently, it snowed um, on the pyramids for the first time in 112 years. 
I didn't know it could do that. Yeah, you know, um, I, I bring up weather because we were talking to uh, Fran uh, during the break, and oh, did I say Fran? No, it's Bev, our marriage counselor that's called in. <laughs> Yay, Bev. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How are you, Bev? Only you, space boy. Oh, I'm not doing too bad. Well, good. Sound good. Yeah. Eh, my allergies are acting up like Mine crazy. Too. Oh. I can only imagine if you I came to Houston. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think I'd about be in misery? What did you think about tonight's topic, or did you want to talk about other stuff? I don't care whatever you want to talk about. My dear. <laughs> I know we've heard from you I'm in a while. Easy. I know. It's I'm been easy. a while. Uh, so is is Bob still around? <laughs> is Bob yeah, still? Yeah. He's still married to Bob. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've been married almost 32 years. It's just, he's like a a, a, a habit to me now. Oh. <laughs> you know, they say it only takes 30 no, days to break or make a, a new habit. So. And, and Sir, <laughs> Sir Lana keeps trying to make or break me. <laughs> All righty then. So, were you concerned that uh, we were going to have to jump over our desk here during the topic tonight? Now, did your marriage well, counselor instinct kick in? Yeah, I was about ready to say, okay, you two, calm. I was about ready to put in there. <laughs> calm down, you two. Well, you know, it's such a passionate topic, you know, and uh, yeah, at the end, yeah. of, end of the day... Uh, uh, you know, you know. At least it's lively. It's debate, debatable, and uh, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, it, it's hard to feel good about the situation. You know, from my perspective, I love space. Duh, right? And um, you know, the space age is kind of how my persona is kind of based around. So you know, mm -hmm. when we were talking about going to the moon, it's relevant. Yes, we went to the moon. And, um, you know, the, the Gemini launches, you know, the Mercury missions, uh, um, all that, you know, time period is such a, a wonderful time in history when it comes to space exploration. I wish we had more of it now. Um, and, you know, it's, um, it's hard to, like, uh, take the pill, if you will, of, of the creator of the space age, of his history. Um, and so... Uh, it's definitely one of those ones where you ride the ride where on one side you got all this wonderful stuff and then on the other side you open up the door to the closet and you find all this ugliness. So, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, you know, there's so many people, you know, they're trying to rewrite history. Mm -hmm. Or whitewash it. To where yeah, it, there you go. I find it, go. I think, you know, you, and, and, you've been with us many times before, um, um, Bev, when we've talked about history and, you know, when we yeah. said, you know, how do you, you know, how do you feel about certain topics like that where you were in school and you learned one thing and, or didn't learn it at all, only to find out later on that something actually happened and you feel like, hey, that wasn't taught to me in school. Yep. You have to wonder well, why. Like this, yeah, and it's like, well, like slavery. They want to. They 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 want to take that out of the history books. And if we keep it out and we yeah. don't talk about it, we forget. Then how do we know slavery is bad? How do we know how much devastation it costs? How the lives and it costs? How do you know we won't repeat it? Exactly, because, you know, they always say uh, if we don't learn from history, we're doomed to repeat it. You know, I, it's, it's, yep. you know, I feel like the world has had civilizations before um, the modern civilizations that we have now that are on the earth. Um, I think it's just, uh, you know, it shows a time that um, this earth is a fragile uh, environment. Um, you know, when you talk about the asteroid that hit the Yucatan, 
peninsula that de oh, you know wow. that destroyed the dinosaurs or uh what about the Tustus I I'm gonna, gonna get this wrong, but help me out. Uh what? in Russia, the meteorite that hit in Russia, the t Tusk I can't oh, yeah. I I I, can't. Uh, yeah, I know I can't. I'm glad I'm glad you were able to translate through my stutter because I can't say it. But anyway, um I'm not familiar with that one, sorry. I'm sure if you if I showed you you'd go, Oh yes, the one that hit Russia that uh the meteor ex that hit Russia. Yeah, exploded and it totally devastated it like this whole forest area in Russia. Um and um yeah, you're looking that up, Wendell? Yeah. Chibolonis? Nope, that's not, it no. starts with a T. Um, but anyway, as Solanus starts to fill in the blanks for my, my Swiss cheese mind, but yeah, you know, there's been oh, many times. Now, hey, here's another good example. Didn't even take place here on Earth, but the shoemaker Levy comet uh, breaking up and hitting Jupiter. And we saw what a stain yeah. it put on Jupiter, right? And that... That was pretty sizable, yeah. almost the size of our planet that uh, made those um, the the marks on Jupiter. So you know we're yeah. There's Gene. Gene is uh, uh, T U N G. Yeah, yeah. Uh, U S K A. And I can't. Tunguska? Thank you very much, my babushka. Tunguska. Tunguska. Yeah. I don't, I've never heard of that. I, I know you've you've heard about it. So, no. or maybe anyway. I haven't heard it referred to in that. But yeah, thankfully Jupiter takes a lot of the uh, the brunt for us. Takes because, the black eyes for us. Yeah. So you know, but the, you know, Earth, you know, we're overdue for uh, something major to happen to us, and I'm not talking about a nuclear exchange between two superpower countries right now. I'm talking about something from outer space, and so. Um, only time will tell, you know, when, you know, when that happens again. But I guess the point what I'm trying to make here well, is maybe that. Maybe that's what's going to happen on, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say real quick before you talk about the apocalypse and the rapture there is that, uh, you know, um, <laughs> is that, you know, there have been civilizations here and yet academia refuses to acknowledge of these ancient civilizations that have been here on Earth. That have come and gone. Um, uh, Gobeki Tepe, Tepe is a fine example of that. Um, you see all the pyramids yeah. that you see in South America and 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 in just different places that look similar in technology. But how could all these cultures create a, a similar, you know, engineering and you know and be so far away without the use of some kind of communication? Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I believe strongly in ancient civilizations here on our planet. And, um, and I think that, um, oh, yeah. uh, you know, academia refuses to teach it because, you know, once you become tenure in some of these places, you know, you could be teaching that the, the earth is made of cheese and they will keep that as long as they're alive. And, you know, when true, uh, uh, people of knowledge that try to pass the, the correct knowledge of history um, eventually uh, ascend into positions where they can proclaim what actually happened here. So, well, and and you know, not only that, you know, it. it I think a person, and I don't know, can a person have too much knowledge? <laughs> well. Hmm. Uh, uh, Hmm. Why are you humming over there? It's like, I, I think that that would be great to have the knowledge of the universe. Well, if you know, there's some things you're probably happier off not knowing, maybe. Hmm. That could be a burden yeah, to know. And, 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 and also, you could be a smug, that snotty. In the wrong hands. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I was brought up to believe that knowledge is power. Yeah, and po absolute power corrupts <laughs> absolutely. G.I. Joe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Joe did not say absolute power. power no, Geo, Geo. I'm saying that Geo, Geo. knowing is half the battle. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, Bev. G.I. Joe. <laughs> see, she knows. Well, Bev, we love you, <laughs> and we thank you for calling in tonight. Give us a giggle. <laughs> well, I want to wish um, Sir Lana a happy birthday. Uh, thanks. A little early, but she'll take it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> How hey, maybe that's what's going to happen on on her birthday. A meteor will strike. The well, Earth. it's supposed to end on the 18th, and if it doesn't end on the 18th, we got another chance on the 23rd. So keep your fingers crossed. Oh God. 
Yeah. I guess we'll see. <laughs> well, anyway, we love you, Bev. Well, and we love you too, guys. And, and make sure to give Robert a big hug for us. If only he well, deserves sure it. Will. Yeah. <laughs> see, he's been having heart palpitations. Oh. Well, give him give him our prayers yeah. for us. Carefully hug him. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he's just been resting. Okay. We'll get some rest. Uh, well, you know, you know where where to find us. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I sure do. All right, Bev. Well, you have a good evening. Well, you too, and I love you guys. Ditto. Yeah. I love all the space cadets. <laughs> they love you too, Bev. Oh, I. Okay, bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. We've still got a little time. If anybody's interested, that number is 833-202-7286, 833-202-SBUN. Well, what an interesting evening tonight. Uh, the phone uh, seemed to be working well, good. Well, we've had guests, and we've just had so much time that we have had to speak to the guests we didn't mm -hmm. have we weren't able to take that is true we haven't been able to take because you know when we tried to technology constraints um get an audience um get a good guest it's hard to break away from them yeah uh, and plus i couldn't do group calling for some reason so now oh, skype we've got it to where we even have a separate number for the guest to call in that's separate from the listener line so there will be no problems for everybody to being call, on board, calling, and be able to call and ask questions of our guest. And you know, we're we're in the big time, baby. It's getting back to the the good old days when we were able to do that. We would get it up to three people or more. I supposed to have up to five people at one time on at the same time. I don't recommend doing that. But well, no, we've talked about that and how it kind of distracts. Just, yeah, uh, because you know we can't. You know, it's one blop. It's not like we can individually control the volumes and, and all that for those five, but we can take up the five calls and be on hold. Got so, another caller. Okay. We'll patch them through. Unless we're being butt dialed. Well, let's see. Hello. Hello, Hello. caller. You're on the air. Caller. Let's see. Did they hang up? I think it's a butt dial. Okay, well, we're moving on. <laughs> The, is the show if, that the call is hang up? Hung yeah, up? they're gone. Um, if you were trying to call, let's let's okay, let's try this again. Different number. Okay, caller, you're on the air. You're on the air. You're listening to Space Boy Universe. <laughs> <laughs> Could this possibly be our one and only Patrick Spore? Maybe. <laughs> I don't think there's any maybes about it. How are you, Patrick? Yeah, I, I'm doing good. You guys sound real good. Your callers sound real good tonight. And I uh, just wanted to double check. I am on next Saturday. Yes. yes you, we were going to get to that shortly. Yeah, but I'm um, glad you called because, uh, you know, you are on next week. I said this last week you were going to be on this week, but then Solana corrected me after the after, fact. After the show was over. And, and so I guess I was just, well, just excited that, that you were going to be coming on. Well, I uh, I looked at your website and it had the twenty fourth. So mm -hmm. next Saturday is the twenty first. Oh, so are you, is did you want? Did we do we have a show? Uh, uh, well, let's just let's just settle this right now on the air. Do you want to come on next week, Patrick? Because I'm excited to get you on. Yeah, I know. It's I, up the twenty first is is what I had scheduled, yes. which is next Saturday. But you have the oh, 24th Patrick, on your website. Patrick, that's just, I see what happened there. There's um a typo there, uh, and there's a piece of code yeah. that's being, sh that's just me being stupid. Well, so. I sent you a couple of uh, emails just as a follow-up, but I figured since you had a few minutes, you wouldn't mind me calling in. Oh, and, no. And You're and always bringing welcome. Bringing everybody up to speed. I see my, my friend Gene, Poet Laureate, uh, on your chat has been really active tonight. I really like his poetry. You know, you should lay down some music with his poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. It would definitely go hand in hand. Do a little rap version there <laughs> with Gene. He, he has the, the but, pipe, uh, pipes of, yeah. of, of, of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he 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 is. A, I just wanted to say semper, semperfy to Gene out there. But the... Um, yeah, I'm going to be on next week and talk about pre-meditation. Is the is your life pre-meditated? Hmm. And of course, some other things. 
And I, I've got some pretty good notes here I've been compiling for the last couple of weeks, and uh, hopefully your space cadets will join in, and hopefully, I know a lot of them probably won't call in, but they, you know, I'm going to ask questions that they can answer on the chat that you guys can let me know about. Yeah. And if anybody wants to call in, you know, the last part of the show is always and ask some questions or talk about something. But you were talking earlier uh, about Tunguska. Yes, yes. Tunguska. The giant meteor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the uh, hey Bev, how you doing? The uh, <laughs> he was triggered. Every, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that that is like still to this day they don't really know what caused that. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. when you mentioned that, what was so interesting is I was sitting there listening to you, and you you started out with snow on the pyramids. You said the first time in 112 years. Mm-hmm. Well, I just made a post. I don't know if you read it. I think I sent it to you a repetition phenomena that 112 was repeating all over the place and. Suddenly, you said that. Wow! Uh, and you came up now. Now I looked it up online. I couldn't find anything except from 2013. Is that recent news that you just had? Yeah, it was a post that I just saw on the wall and just uh, glanced at it. Glanced at it, and we were talking about weather with uh, Bev during the commercial break, and um, I just found it interesting because I'd never seen the pyramids with uh, a small, you know, just caked over with a little snow, you know, just to make it white. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, immediately when you said 1 in 12, I went to look, but the only thing I could find is that it happened in 2013, and there was a headline, first time snow on the pyramids in 112 years. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dino out there. I haven't seen him the last couple of weeks in your chat. Is he doing okay? Yeah, he just called before. Yeah. before your he was having, having like a little nerve pain and went to a chiropractor. We just and, heard from him on and, the phone. And got him adjusted. And that's it's interesting because I don't know if you heard that when I was talking to him. You know, about he was having this issue about three weeks ago. It just so happens about three weeks ago, I was I just reached out of uh, out to him. Just I just felt this feeling to call him. I didn't get him because I got his message, and I thought, well, he's probably having some dinner or something at the time. But um, but it was a feeling of like, you know, I just need to check on Dino to see if he's okay. And then I find out tonight that uh, he he indeed had been suffering from this pain in his back and. Uh, uh, and so, I, what do you think about that, Patrick? Yeah, I hope it's interesting synchronicity because I remember. I think you went through a period of time when you had a bat. You, you coughed and you threw your back out. Oh uh, uh, yeah, coughed and threw his back out. Yeah, it was uh, nasty. Yeah, people <laughs> do that. That happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have have those situations. Now, I posted the dream about you on April first. Did right. you read that one? Uh, about the uh, yeah. the issue in Dallas and uh, or up not in Dallas. Well, no, it was north it of was, Dallas. It was a dream of you you wearing your spacesuit, right? Not with the helmet, and you were pointing at a map of Texas, right? And you were showing me this map, and you pointed at McKinney, Texas, mm-hmm. which is kind of north of Dallas. Yeah, I know McKinney. Right, but you also, for some reason, were showing me the whole map of Texas. So I thought I'm trying to figure out. I was trying to explore what's going to happen there. Mm-hmm. And and McKinney, and McKinney, Texas. But we'll see, we'll see. But but no lotto connected to your birth information has hit since April first. So I get a little concerned when after two weeks there's no lotto. So you you know I hope nothing's going to go wrong there for you. Uh, I hope not either. <laughs> here, here <laughs> well, Mercury I... goes direct. On... I was going to say about goes that. Direct this Monday. Yeah, yeah. And and Solana's birthday is the 18th. 18th correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I yeah. wish you a happy birthday right now. Yeah, uh, all like that me. means you is, yay, you're not dead. <laughs> That's all it means is, hooray, you're yeah. not dead. <laughs> That's all the birthdays yeah, mean. Uh, the, yeah, but um, anyway, uh, I, uh, I knew you had a few minutes here, so I wanted to call and I just double-check sure. to make sure that that was correct on your site. If or, you, re- you, know, if you refresh our site right now, I have corrected it while you're talking. Right, yeah, and I sent you an email to the title there because you said about various subjects, but I just wanted to make it clear because I'm going to put that on my blog. I I, I, hit I just changed people it the other day. I just changed it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping that I get a lot of a lot of uh, page views this week on that when I put it on there for the show next week. Yeah, uh, fixed it. I said so. Last time I was on your show, which was about six months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been yeah. since December. Yeah, it's it's like tripled my uh, between you and Solaris's show. <laughs> you guys probably pull more traffic than you realize because I've noticed after mm-hmm. your show and after her show, my numbers go up. So that's some good news for you. 
Oh, yeah. Well, that's good news for you, too, right? Yeah, it, it's good news all around. Well, it's good news for me, but, I mean, it means that there's people, you may not be aware of how many people, like we talked about this before, that are like me that don't do the chat, that are listening to your program. And that's always, that's true. That, that's always important. It, well, you know, um, you know, we may not see it, but I mean, we we definitely see it in other ways. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, and then and then the, I think the PA UK network helps you out as well. Mm-hmm. And um, there might well, be an opportunity. Uh, yeah, I was going to say there. we I don't. don't we, we don't know. We, we don't know. We have an opportunity that we're looking off in the distance and. So we'll just have, see, have to see how that plays out. If it does, then our traffic will increase. And, it doesn't. And, you know, it's a conversation we've had before with you, Patrick, and that, uh, you know, when the traffic increases, uh, we should see, mm-hmm. you know, better things. You know, even with the Space Boy music thing, uh, with uh, me doing the free music thing, that has it definitely... Seems to have opened some things up, right? It has opened a few things up, so... Uh, I told Dino it's going to be uh, predetermination. Okay. And, and and some some other things on top of that. Oh, by the way, on Netflix, if, if your space cadets are interested, the new series, the reboot of Lost in Space, started yesterday, and I watched all of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I just finished it off today, and uh, man, it was good, and I enjoyed it myself, Patrick. Uh, hopefully, we can talk more uh, movies too when you come on next weekend, and uh, I'm just looking yeah. forward to kind of changing up a little bit of our normal talking. Uh, pattern, but uh, but definitely uh, want to mention a few movies and see get pick your brain because I know you periodically will send me an email and I'm like oh yeah I'm watching that right now it's been good or you know but yeah Lost yep. in Space sure. uh, if you've got Netflix you definitely should watch it it's, it's it was good it, it, and uh, yep. I look forward to season two oh it's a great cliffhanger at the end there mm-hmm. but the uh, oh, one last thing I had this I know you guys are fans of Thor the Thor movies right oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a, the such mo- the incre- as most of my dreams are extremely real life, like just like talking to you guys right now. But I had a dream about Chris Hemsworth last night, which was just crazy funny. And if anybody lucky wants to you. read it, just go to my blog. <laughs> huh? I said lucky you. <laughs> oh, it was, oh, it was hilarious. He and I were sitting at a bar and drinking, and I don't drink, but I mean, it was just hilarious. I couldn't believe how real it was. And then Jay Leno, I had the Jay Leno. But anyway, you can go to the blog. Uh, it's at patrick-patrickscott.blogspot.com if you want to read any of those new dreams. And I look forward to seeing you guys and being on your show next week and hope all the space cadets join in and uh, and have a good time. Awesome. We're looking forward to talking to you then, Patrick. That's going to be fun. Okay. You guys have a good week. Thanks you for too. calling. All right. See you soon. Bye. Take care. All right, so we've reached the end of our programming. See, it looked like Dino was calling back, so I was kind of confused. So, hmm. so um, the thing is, um, next week we have Patrick Spore on. and um, so I've got an idea for the 28th, mm-hmm. so let me go percolate it. And each day brings us closer to Comic Palooza, and we're looking yes, forward to that. Yes, we've got so much prep still ahead of us, and, although we're doing fairly well. And hopefully we get out of this uh, metro... Uh, metro Retro... Uh, Mercury. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Mercury grade, you suck. And, um, <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the face, Mercury. I'm, wait, you wait. I'm going to punch you in the face when I get a chance. Which um, celestial body would you like to punch in the face, mm-hmm. if you could? Mercury. But anyway, on that magical note, I guess we'll see you next time. Same bat channel, same bat time. I'm not going to even ask her because you know how she goes. So good night, everybody. Space Boy Universe is hosted by Space Boy and Sir Lana. Executive producer is Sir Lana. Social media producer is Dennis Koch. Associate producer is Lee Ann Cordes. Music production is Space Boy of SpaceBoyMusic.com. Special thanks goes out to Lee Ann K. K28, Solars Blue Raven, Patrick Spurrier, Dino, Bob, and Beverly M. This has been a Space Boy Universe production. Support the universe by exploring Space Boy Universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. Sweet dreams, Space Cadets.
You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lotta. 